Hi guys, uh, please note we'll start the webinar in 10 minutes. Like we are expecting more participants to join. So we'll start by 10 10. Till then I'm sharing the uh, social media platforms links with you all in the chat box. So make sure if you have yet to connect with us or follow our social media platforms, do that. Thank you. Hi guys, good morning to all those who have connected just now. Please note, we will start the webinar in five minutes as we are expecting few more participants to join. So we'll start by 10 10. Uh, till the time we have shared the attend, uh, we have shared the social media platform links in the chat box. So make sure you follow the social media platforms to get the updates on the upcoming webinars and workshop which we do. Also, I have shared the steps for AI 900 complementary learning achievement batch. As you can see in the chat box, I have shared the steps for it. Also the URL at the end. So make sure you follow the steps and get your learning achievement batch activated. Once you get this batch activated, you can share this batch on your LinkedIn and Twitter profile. Make sure once you get this batch activated, 
please uh, share the screenshot of it in the chat box or if you face any issue while redeeming the badge please uh, do let me know in the chat box so i can help you with that thank you guys i have shared the uh, link for the batch in the chat box again as you can see please make sure follow you follow the steps and get your batch activated I hope you all can hear me and you can see my screen. So we'll start with the webinar now. Uh, welcome you all. 
in this AI 900 as your AI fundamental webinar. So it will be a four hour webinar from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Myself, Chaitali, your host for this webinar. So I will be helping you all throughout the session if you need any help. So moving ahead, talking about the event sponsor, as you can see, Synergetics. So Synergetics is India's one of a kind corporate learning solution company. Uh, which helps any industry to get the relevant technological solutions. We not only provide the group trainings, but also provide the Microsoft trainings. Which helps every individual to get the uh, get the professional values and succeed in this competitive world. So as you can see on the screen, we have solutions. We have onboarding solution. Then we have reskilling solution. Then we have certification solution. Certification plus add on solution. Cloud adoption. Architecting solution. Practice playbook solution. Latest technology training solution and emerging technology training solution. So Synergetics do provide training on all of the solutions. Then today's webinar is organized and handled by ATC community. That is Azure Tech community and sponsored by Synergetics and Microsoft. So ATC community is open to all the people who are interested in cloud technologies. So you just need to follow our meetup groups. Or communities you can say which are an emerging technology community for all. Then we have Azure Tech Community Pune for Pune Kurs. Then the community specifically made for Surat, that is Emerging Technology Community Surat. Then we have Azure Tech Community Nagpur for Nagpur Kurs. So you just need to install the Meetup app on your phone or on your device and follow our communities. So you'll get the updates regarding the upcoming webinars and workshop which we do. So you just have to install the Meetup app to get and follow these communities. I will share the community links in the chat box for you all so you can go and follow us on the, on the communities. Then we have the code of conduct that you all need to follow. Uh, please note that you are not allowed to take the screenshot of the presentation while the speaker is sharing the screen and cannot do the screen recording. We'll try to upload this recording on our official YouTube channel. So make sure you follow the YouTube channel. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and get the recording. We'll share the YouTube channel link also in the chat box for you all. Then the speaker for this webinar uh, is Mr. Chandrasekhar Deshpande. He is an MCT Microsoft certified trainer and currently works with Synergetics as practice head. He has years of experience in delivering certification training as well. So moving ahead, the agenda for the webinar. So participants will get an overview on AI 900 certification and will try to clear, clear out the doubts uh, related to the concepts on AI. As I said earlier in this webinar, we are providing a complimentary learning achievement batch for AI 900. So make sure you follow this step shared in the chat box and get your learning achievement batch activated. Once you get the batch activated, you can see you will get a batch activation notification on your screen. Once you get the batch activated, you can share that batch on your LinkedIn and Twitter profile. Also, we have study material over there in this batch. So make sure you get your learning achievement batch activated. Then we have uh, AI month going on. So there are open webinars on AI technology. So if we, if you, any one of you have interested in getting in touch with us or you want to register for AI uh, webinars, I will share the registration links and details in the chat box for you all so you can go and register over there. 
then do follow us on our social media platforms. I will share the links for uh, all the social media platforms in the chat box for you all. Also, it's a request to all the participants that make sure you submit the feedback form by the end of the webinar. We'll share a feedback form link in the chat box for you all. So you have to submit that form. That's all from my side. Uh, I will hand over the mic to the speaker, Mr. Chandrasekhar Deshpande. Thank you all. Thanks for your patience. Uh, thanks, Chitali. Thanks, everybody, for joining here. This is uh, a month we are planning on artificial intelligence, specifically uh, covering as your uh, open AI services also. So everybody knows that uh, there is a very much uh, and talk in industry about uh, open AI as on today. Uh, and in this uh, month, we will try to uh, get understanding of cognitive services as well as uh, open AI and uh, open AI in general and open AI on Azure uh, in specific. So to begin with, uh, this is the first session for this month. And to begin with, uh, we will first of all understand more about AI 900 certification. Uh, this month we are actually projecting technology and uh, uh, say talking to you about the certification is a secondary, but our main focus will be on technology. And anyway, whenever you learn something, definitely you need to get some kind of appreciation. So you will always prefer going for uh, certification and that not only you know is a kind of appreciation for you but that also uh, make your profile attractive so i am sharing my screen OK, how we will uh, go about this session? Uh, let me first of all tell you about it. Uh, we will understand the concept through slides, then we will go for uh, some demos which are on Azure Cognitive Services. So today's discussion mainly will be revolving around different uh, cognitive services available. So we will see some of the demos and thereafter I will take you through target curriculum of uh, uh, Azure AI 900 certification, as well as how can you get more and more authentic information from Azure websites and how can you uh, get a study material, how you will prepare for the examination and uh, how you will get some of the sample questions there. So those points also I will discuss maybe briefly, but definitely okay by um, uh, the dying hours of the session. So we will go through. I know the curriculum, but I will tell you where to look for the curriculum. OK, I will just quickly cover uh, part of the curriculum for you. So uh, the whole curriculum has been divided into four parts. Module one up to module four. So first of all, let us have a look at uh, module one. So module one talks about. Introduction to artificial intelligence and whatever be the services uh, uh, Azure is making available on uh, you know, artificial intelligence. So that also we will have a look at. So artificial intelligence and everywhere there is a hype and uh, you know, this particular uh, word it has created very much curiosity among uh, uh, many people. OK, and at the top of it, you know, everybody knows everybody wants to know what this, uh, this open AI is and how this open AI can uh, make their day to day life uh, simple. And uh, more qualitative. Software that imitates uh, human capabilities, those are being called as uh, artificial intelligence softwares. Predicting outcomes and recognizing patterns based on the historic data how do you, what do you mean by predicting outcomes? So in case if I submit a historical data to the system to ask to the system. 
uh, whether means in case if it is a customer data of the bank and in case if branch manager wants to know from the system uh, how much this customer is re reliable to grant a loan. So looking at the historical data, the system has to uh, give its opinion as yes, loan can be granted or no, it is risky to grant a loan. OK, so there again, this is a kind of a you know human logic, human like logic. OK, what your system is applying and looking at the historical data quickly system is coming up with uh, uh, probability. I'm deliberately using the word probability because you know here again for these predictions somewhere you know, probability uh, is being used. So it will show you the probability of uh, uh, granting the loan or not granting the loan. Similarly, it can uh, recognize the patterns based on historical data. OK, so similar kind of data. It can create a different data sets you know, where in one data set there will be a similar kind of data. So thereby, you know, patterns can be recognized in the data and recognizing such patterns in the data to know the trends in the market is a very popular use case here. Recognizing abnormal events and making decisions, this uh, use case is extremely uh, useful as on today. Okay, like uh, uh, identifying abnormality in the uh, banking transactions, identifying abnormality in the telemetry what we are receiving for a specific machine and uh, there with that abnormality if we recognize that machine you know either is eating up more ram or, or some other activity it is doing abnormally okay so then in that case uh, the system has to come up with some kind of measures to be taken in case if uh, uh, some heavy earth mover machine is uh, uh, heating it's some of the parts are heating abnormally so something definitely is going wrong and alarm can be raised or a measure can be taken to cool down those parts. A system which cools down those parts can be automatically started. OK, many such uh, uh, you know, use cases are uh, there where recognizing abnormality is extremely useful. Interpreting visual inputs, we may be submitting uh, CCTV footage or images to the system wherein uh, the system may be recognizing objects in that image or people in that image. OK, specifically those people uh, against whom maybe uh, there is a lookup notice and the system is identifying such people and uh, raising the alarm. Uh, that such a person is at this place, OK? And uh, so many such kind of uh, use cases can be uh, generated here with the help of artificial intelligence. There is something uh, called as auto driven cars, you know, where car is uh, already capturing uh, the traffic on the road and accordingly uh, identifying the distance in between car and any object, OK, to take the decision how to avoid that object. So auto driven cars again can be uh, an example of interpreting visual inputs. Understanding language like Alexa, where you ask something uh, uh, to Alexa to do, OK, and Alexa does it. Engaging in the conversation, chatbots are there, uh, uh, wherein you, know, you put the question and you really get a relevant answer. Extracting information from sources to gain knowledge. Many such means this is a document search, for example, you know, where lots of documents are there. You simply have to uh, submit your query and it will uh, crawl through the documentation to find the correct answer to the query. OK, so such type of uh, lots of use cases are there where we can very effectively use artificial intelligence. OpenAI not only doing all these things, at the top of which OpenAI is capable of adding its own innovation. So whenever it is creating the answer, the answer is not in just few words, but answer may be in paragraphs and pages. Because OpenAI will add its own innovation and describe and elaborate the answers you know, in, in its own language. So OpenAI add its own innovation over there. 
and in the innovation open ai even can add you know its analysis as well as emotions okay so open ai definitely offers you similar kind of uh, uh, arrangements in addition to that you know open ai really truly behave like a human being okay by adding its own innovations and you know uh, emotions <laughs> These are different workloads uh, we can make possible on uh, uh, artificial intelligence. OK, so there is something called as a machine learning. Machine learning basically is for doing predictions. It is basically for doing predictions. Just a minute. Please give me a minute. Huh? I will be back. Dumb somebody at the doorstep. Uh, sorry for interruption. OK, so coming back. So I already have told you about uh, uh, predictive analysis uh, using machine learning. Now, there are uh, other use cases also like anomaly detection. OK, that detects unusual pattern. Or some unusual event that is happening. And then notifying. Uh, stakeholders about happening of the unusual uh, event to uh, take some preemptive measure. So that is anomaly detection, and I gave you examples like uh, identifying uh, fraudulent transactions uh, in the bank. Uh, so that is uh, anomaly detection. Okay, or identifying uh, unusual uh, uh, pa uh, parameters in the telemetry. That is again anomaly detection. Computer vision applications that interpret visual inputs from cameras, images, and videos. So we will try to understand more and more on computer vision. Natural language processing. I will also cover a part of natural language processing in the uh, in our discussion in the day. Knowledge mining, extract information from data source to create a searchable knowledge store. That is uh, knowledge mining. So multiple such uh, uh, workloads are possible uh, in artificial intelligence and for that purpose. Many uh, cloud vendors, many uh, product vendors have introduced uh, their own products okay, to facilitate uh, using uh, all these use cases or implementing all these use cases in your business. Now here artificial intelligence Definitely is a boon to the uh, mankind. OK, but whenever any boon comes, it comes with its own responsibilities also. OK, and if in case if you do not uh, abide by the responsibilities, you know, it will it will not be a boon, but it will be a bane. OK, similar are the things about the open AI also, and thereby you will realize that many vendors are offering open AI services. OK, but not to everybody. They are offering these services with many restrictions that until and unless they verify the developer who will be using these services or who will be uh, developing some uh, things based on these services, you know, is recognized, is authenticated. Okay, then only they will authorize uh, the developer. So uh, there are a couple of principles, six principles here you can see. These are applicable to artificial intelligence as well as to open AI. So see the fairness, bias can affect the results. Now this is something 
you know, as on today, open AI is also facing. It is because, you know, open AI when goes into internet to find the answer to the question, you know, what will be the uh, data available on the internet on which these models have been trained? You know, in case if that data, uh, uh, you know, is biased, so obviously results will also be biased. And that has been identified and that we can realize uh, really in artificial intelligence as well as in open AI that sometimes you get a biased result. It is because those models haven't been yet trained on all type of data. The models have been designed to automatically get trained, but we will have to still wait for some more time to get you know, uh, fair data, fair results. <laughs> Reliability and safety. Errors may cause ha harms. Uh, after all, exactly which use case you are implementing here uh, in the AI, you know, depending on that use case, uh, reliability and safety differs. If you are implementing a use case of uh, auto-driven car, and there, in case if a delayed decision or wrong decision, you know, becomes a harmful and fatal, fatal to the uh, people on the road or fatal to the driver driving the car or fatal to the people in the car. Okay, so depending on the use case, you know, uh, safety uh, takes its turns. Auto autonomous vehicles, for example, experiences system failure and causes some collision. Privacy and security. Now, this is really interesting that you, these are all machine uh, learning language, sorry, machine learning models you know, who are to be trained by submitting some data. These models are traded on the data. These models become mature to take the decision and accordingly then you get the decisions. It is the model's maturity and the accuracy or performance of the model highly depends on how diversified data you train that model upon, how diversified the data is. Okay, that is one thing. And the second thing is the data that we are using to train the model you know, that data sometimes is sensitive. It may be bank related data, it may be uh, medical related data, and there are then different compliances. Those are applicable here to this data also. Okay, in case if it is a credit card related data, in case if it is a critical medical data, that data must not be uh, disclosed and it must be, uh, say, maintain its sensitivity. OK, uh, well within the norms of the security. So that is the privacy and security. Inclusiveness means making this uh, artificial intelligent uh, for uh, all this data in the uh, in the users like. Uh, uh, the, uh, say this technology can be very much and uh, very effectively used for visually impaired people, you know, dumb and deaf people, OK, but you have to design artificial intelligence and its implementation in such a way you know, so that it should be accessible to everybody. OK, that is inclusiveness. Transparency, whenever a decision is taken, you know, based on what parameters it has taken a decision, that is the transparency. OK, so whenever it says no, why it is saying no, whenever it is saying yes, why it is saying yes, you know, in case if it can explain. Oh, no the uh, outcome you know that is uh, transparency accountability in case if something goes wrong you know who should be held accountable for that all these are different principles of uh, responsible ai okay and these principles all these principles guide every kind of development in artificial intelligence as far as ai services in microsoft are concerned these are major four services available. OK, one more service uh, is not uh, visible here, but I will discuss it in tomorrow's meet meetup. We are planning uh, meetup. OK, uh, Chaitali will share all the details about it, and we are planning you know, face to face discussion on, on these technologies tomorrow. OK, so there I will uh, talk about few more services uh, related to artificial intelligence on uh, Microsoft Azure. So here you can see Azure Machine Learning. 
cognitive services, bot services, and cognitive search. So looking at Azure machine learning, let me briefly explain you what the service is and how you can look at the service. OK, uh, using the service in your day to day life. Now here in machine learning, there are three approaches available. OK, basically this machine learning service you know, helps you to train the model. To test the model. So multiple models you can train, multiple models you can test, multiple models you can compare with respect to their performance, and you can select one best performing model. Not only you will get one best performing model, but this best performing model. So now you know training and testing life cycle is done. Now what is remaining is that this best performing model now to uh, the deploy for the purpose of the production. OK, and in machine learning, there are arrangements to deploy this model on. Uh, 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 say Kubernetes services. Container uh, instances, OK, so and then we can use it in the production environment. So end to end solution. As your machine learning offers you end to end solution. As we will move ahead, we will see there is a life cycle for data science. There are steps to be followed in the data science and all those steps. Solutions for all those steps are available at one place and it is Azure Machine Learning. Not only that, this Azure Machine Learning can also be used to automate overall you know, training, testing, deployment process. So we can use it for the purpose of the automation you know, by uh, utilizing two services. One is Azure Machine Learning and other is uh, MLOps service. So by combining these two services, you know, we can even automate overall data science process also. OK, so some of the things we will discuss about uh, machine learning as we will go ahead. Cognitive services. So cognitive services offer you, you know, very wide spectrum of artificial intelligence. So vision services are there. Computer vision services, custom vision services are there. Wherein, you know, you can submit uh, CCTV footage, you can submit images, and from those CCTV footage or images, it can identify objects. It can identify names of the objects, names of the different objects appearing in the image. Then it can analyze that image. OK, what kind of image it is? Within the image, in case if there are company logos, it can identify those logos within the image. If there are some text written, maybe banners in the form of the banners or so, you know, it can read that text also. So many such services are, are available under region. Speech offers you, you know, transcription and translation. So you may have some audio clip and which you want to digitize into uh, uh, text. OK, so audio to text, text to audio, text to, to text, many kind of you know, translations and transcriptions are possible in the speech service. Then comes a language service. Language service offers you an arrangement that you will orally give the command to the system and system will understand that command and accordingly will take action. So exactly similar thing like what you do with Alexa. You give some command to Alexa. Alexa understands that command and accordingly Alexa takes the action. So similarly, you can enable your applications. You can enable your machines. Which will take. Audio commands from. You and accordingly take the appropriate action. So that is language. Uh, decisions also. Many such cognitive services are available, and here in this discussion, anyway, we will try to understand as many services as we can within available time span. Azure bot service, Azure bot service is a conversational bot service available. You know, you type the question, and it will give you the answer. Okay, so it is similar to uh, you know many many bank portals are offering you bot service, wherein you simply type the question. OK, and somebody not the human being, but somebody at the other other end 
you know, uh, recognize your question and find the most relevant answer on that and return that answer. So that somebody is nothing but a bot service available. This bot service not only can be used through chats, it can be used through telephone also, can be used through email also. So you elaborate your requirement through email. OK, and it will read the email and accordingly you, it will create an email and send it to back to you within the email. You know, relevant uh, information is uh, populated. Cognitive search, you know, data extraction, enrichment and indexing of intelligent search and knowledge mining means you know, the cognitive uh, search will go into the. A large reservoir of documents. I will uh, identify a stuff from there. Either it will give you uh, the document which is uh, important for you or relevant for you. OK, so either it will give you the references to documents or even if we go beyond that you know, in the open AI, it will extract the information from the document and will create its appropriate answer. OK, and it will create the answer in the similar fashion. OK, how a human being would have written it. Okay. So many such AI services are available in Azure, uh, Microsoft. So let us now quickly go through cognitive services. OK, AI application resources in uh, Azure subscription. So here I have created a cognitive service. Let me show you. Just a minute where it is. Oh, here it is. This is my Azure portal. And in Azure portal here you can see I have created multiple services. One of the services is Chandra Cognitive. So this is a cognitive service. And under this heading, you will give bundle of services like making decisions, language uh, service, vision service, speech service, form recognizer service. Now let me quickly elaborate on form recognizer service. So you give it a form written uh, on the paper, sorry, printed on the paper, filled by human being, okay, a person or printed uh, on the printer. Okay, so this is hard copy form or you give it a form in the form of JPG image or PDF PDF um, uh, page. What it will do, it will read a necessary information from that form and it will digitize it. So maybe that information, what it is reading from that form, it will directly convert it into uh, record in the database or convert it into JSON document of uh, say MongoDB. So that is the form recognizer which you know quickly reads the, the receipts and forms uh, and uh, digitize it immediately. Okay, so all these services are available under uh, Chandra Cognitive. Now to these services, there are two things. Okay, here you find I have created a Chandra Cognitive service, and here you find keys and endpoints. I believe everybody here is uh, acquainted to uh, Azure portal. OK, and that's why. I'm assuming uh, that you know all these uh, how to create a service there. What is Azure portal? So I'm not wasting a time in really explaining those things. And here you observe is and endpoint. Here is the endpoint URL, you know, which identifies this uh, service uh, to the outside world, into the outside world, into your code. OK, OK, and here are the keys also. So whoever will have this key you know, will be able to access and work with this service. The code which will have this key will be able to successfully, to successfully access uh, this service. So key and endpoint. These are the, these are the two very important uh, uh, parametric values and essential uh, to work with this service. OK, so that's what I am, I am mentioning here. OK, in an, an application which is consuming this service must have 
a rest endpoint and authentication key. So here is the rest endpoint and here is the key. Yes. <coughs> Just a minute. Whatever we have understood up till now, let us quickly review the things. I would like you to unmute your mic, okay, and tell me the answers one by one. <coughs> What is the answer of the first question? Can you just unmute yourself and tell me the answer? Or otherwise? Okay. These are the answers. Azure ML. Azure ML. You want to create a model to predict cells of high screen based on historic data. So this is the prediction of the cell. You know, and you have to uh, submit the historical data to the machine learning model. So machine learning is the correct answer here. OK, you have to submit the historical data to the machine learning model. And what kind of historical data it is? The cells till to the date. OK, you will have to submit uh, to the machine learning model uh, to train it. And once you train it, OK, so that trained model you know, we'll have two things. One is a specific kind of algorithm. OK, and the second is uh, that algorithm has been matured. Uh, uh, by training it with a historical data. OK, so you get that model, you know, which has been trained. OK, on the historical data and now that model is capable of uh, you know, doing the predictions. OK, which Azure service you should you use? The answer is machine learning. OK, let us read the second uh, question and try to answer it. Let me check whether somebody has given answers. Computer vision is the answer most of you have given. And your answer is absolutely right. Computer vision. Why it is not anomaly detection? OK, that uses images to detect cracks in car windshield and warn driver when windshield should be repaired or replaced. OK, so it, it should warn driver. OK, that now it is the time or by what time should a, a driver repair or replace the windshield. OK, which uh, AI workload uh, to describe? OK, so some different um, uh, windshield images are to be given as a, a training data to the uh, computer vision model. OK, computer vision model and thereby then that model will do the prediction. OK, looking at the cracks, it will do the prediction. Now how uh, quickly the event should to be replaced. Let us come to the third question. The predictive app provides auto uh, audio output for visually impaired users. Audio output for visually impaired users. Which responsible AI principle are we abiding to? Abiding by. So let us see what answers. Yes, inclusiveness. Absolutely right. OK, all answers are correct. Going ahead to the next slide. This is module two. OK, and in module two. We will quickly look at uh, machine learning as a service and I will just quickly tour you to the machine learning service. But before I move ahead, you know what this machine learning service is. Uh, let us understand quickly. So machine learning service you know, can do the predictions for you. Creating predictive models by finding relationships uh, in data. OK, a botanist collects some samples of the flowers. Each sample has a set of features like. What is the size of the petal? And what are all different parts? I am not from botany, so difficult to recall the parts. Petal, sepal, 
and the other parts I will have to record. Anyway, so different measurements about that uh, flower to be uh, given to the city. Okay, and these uh, measurements we are giving in the form of the uh, numbers, okay, not in the form of the images, but in the form of the numbers. And depending on the measures given, it should identify a species for me, what kind of uh, flower it is. Okay, an algorithm to find a relation, the result is a model that encapsulates those relationship. Model can predict the labels of the new sample based on its feature. So once you train the model on hundreds of uh, uh, data, and now you want your system to uh, name the uh, flower which you have received and you don't know its name, so you, you will submit the dimensions of that flower and it will tell you what kind of flower it is. OK, so such type of things can be uh, made possible in machine learning. Uh, now in machine learning, there are mainly two types of algorithms, supervised and unsupervised. So supervised machine learning algorithms, you know, they give you a exact result. So either they will give you uh, the prediction of the cells in coming month. Prediction of the cells in coming month. So it may give you prediction of the cells in terms of, you know, Indian currency or US currency. OK, and uh, it will give you figure that uh, in next month uh, cells will be uh, X million, 600 million or whatever it be. Exact cell it will give. Or it will give you exact class. Exact class means you know, in the banking application whether to uh, grant a loan or not. Yes or no. This is a class. Or in case if we are submitting financial background of the uh, new bank customer and thereby bank uh, uh, this system, machine learning system is looking at that financial status of the customer. You know, it will give you the uh, state of that customer, uh, so whether that uh, uh, customer you know, is from high class background or medium class background, you know, that kind of, uh, you know, uh, it is giving you uh, the state of the class of the customer, you know, that also comes under supervised machine learning. It also comes under supervised machine learning. Unsupervised machine learning, it doesn't give you exact result. What it does is, it goes into the data, very large data, and it partition that data. It divide that data in terms of, you know, uh, it, the trend within that data, and it creates multiple sets of the data. All the data existing into one set is very much similar to each other, and thereby then it classifies uh, uh, the data set. That is unsupervised machine learning. You know, which understand the data pattern and accordingly in you know, a similar pattern, uh, similar the data with a similar pattern, it accumulates together. That is unsupervised machine learning. In supervised machine learning, I gave you two examples, which gives one example which gives you exact figure that is called as a regression. And another gives you a class of the uh, class. Another gives you the result in terms of some class. No? Yes or no, it is a class. A poor, medium, or high, that is again a class. Okay, so that is called as a classification. <clears throat> okay, so this, uh, these are different types of machine learning uh, algorithms. I already told you regression algorithm. Regression algorithm is a much more simpler. Uh, uh, with respect to mathematics and statistics, you know, straightforward mathematical and statistical formulas may be used uh, in that algorithm. Uh, so, some of you might have heard about interpolation and extrapolation. You know, this line on the XY chart is representing all the dots in this line are representing interpolation. Okay, and the dots beyond the coordinates, given coordinates, you know, those are re representing extrapolation. You know, and uh, such type of uh, 
the mathematical expressions can be used in uh, regression uh, to make the predictions. OK, so there may be uh, line equations. There may be there may be hyperbola equations. Such type of equations are normally uh, used uh, as a mathematical expression in regression models. Classification uh, algorithm. So there are classification algorithms also. OK, down the line, if you observe it carefully, you will realize somewhere uh, regression algorithm can be effectively used to make the classification. For example, in the regression algorithm, if a probability is below 0 0.5, then answer can be considered as no. And if it is above 0 0.5, answer can be considered as a yes. OK, so 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, such results you normally get in case of uh, regression. But once you get such a result, you know, you can apply threshold over there in case if 0 0.5 is the threshold. And uh, results if are below 0 0.5 should be considered as no and results above 0 0.5 if are considered as yes. So your regression algorithm can be like giving you uh, even classification results. So that is about the classification uh, uh, logistic regression. Now in logistic regression, though I'm using the word regression, OK, but it is a kind of a classification algorithm. Decision tree, uh, uh, decision tree classifier, random forest classifier, many such examples can be given with respect to uh, classification algorithms. And clustering, I already told you that similar uh, it identifies the data, the pattern, the data, and accordingly segregate the data in different data sets. OK. These are the steps which are normally carried out in overall uh, process, machine learning process. So first of all, whenever you get the data, first of all, you have to get the data from the appropriate and uh, reliable data sources. In case if you realize that data is not uh, with a good quality and its quality is not up to the mark, then you may have to apply different and different measures to improve the quality of the data. Like in data, there may be uh, data missing from it. Then with what appropriate value we can fill up those, that missing data. OK, that is a way to increase the quality of the data. Sometimes there may be uh, a, outliers in the data, OK? There may be uh, sometimes data may be contradictory to each other, OK? So many such things may be there, OK, which we, we may have to identify and fix those problems to improve the data in its quality. After you improve the data in its quality, okay, there may be you allow to apply all your uh, data engineering skills and improve the data. Uh, quality. In order to improve the data quality, we again have you know lots of uh, uh, arrangements uh, on Azure also. By using Python code, you can improve the data quality. By using uh, data factory, and there are something called as the mapping data flows in uh, uh, Azure. By using which you can you can improve the quality of the uh, data. In Synapse Analytics, there is something called as the Synapse Link. Now that also we can use to improve the data quality. In data bricks, you can write a PySpark code to improve the data quality. So there are multiple you know, approaches available, options available to improve the data quality. After you get uh, data with adequate quality, then you have to apply, uh, you have to choose the algorithm and uh, train that algorithm with that data. We call we call it the fit, fit operation, fit the training data to the model so data uh, historical data to be submitted to the model you know that data gets fit into uh, the model and your model uh, get enriched with the knowledge and information from the historical data that process is called as the feeding of the data the trained model encapsulates the relationship in the data use the model to generate predictions from the validation data then you need to once you get a trained uh, model now it is a uh, time to uh, calculate the performance of the model. 
that process is called as a testing or validation. OK, and thereby you get uh, different uh, uh, parameters uh, which are representing the performance of the model. So uh, RMSR errors, uh, in case of classifiers, we may get F1 score, recall, precision, accuracy, AUC. There are multiple parameters you get uh, about the model, okay, which and these parameters then help you to identify and uh, validate the performance of the model. So that what that's what you will do in the fourth step. And in the fifth step, then uh, you evaluate uh, the matrix to compare predicted and actual uh, labels. Uh, you may have to compare the performance of multiple models. OK, to choose a best performing model. See here. We have to use in most of the cases we have to use the trial and error only because nobody can do the prediction which model you know will be best performing. Difficult for anybody to uh, judge. Looking at the data to judge which model or which algorithm to choose which can give the best performance. Data scientists will have to apply trial and error, and uh, data scientists will have to uh, create multiple models. And for one type of algorithm, create multiple models with a different hyperparameters. Okay, and then identify the best performing model and use that best performing model for the purpose of the deployment. So now let us have a look at Azure Machine Learning. Okay, a cloud-based platform for machine learning. I will I will show you all these things. So I am taking you to the Azure Machine Learning now. <clears throat> okay, I will come to this a little later. This is one Azure Machine Learning service I already have created. This is a SaaS kind of service. It has its own portal and in this SaaS kind of service, you, know, you are getting a to a platform uh, to develop complete data science life cycle. So I'm launching its own studio. <clears throat> and here on this studio, you know, you will get three things. Designer, automated ML and notebooks. Now these three things are for three different rules actually. By using these three things, you know you can create multiple models by training them. You can compare the performances of the models. You can choose the best performing model. You can register that best performing model here to universal model registry. You can register that model here. Once you register that model, you know, uh, at the universal level, you can uh, assign access to that model to anybody, any other colleague. OK, who will be you may be working in different region and your colleague may be working in different region. So your you can give access to this model to your colleague and your colleague may use a deployment environment, proprietary deployment environment or the deployment environment what has been offered by Azure. OK, and can make that model available accessible in the production at the production level. Okay, so whenever that uh, whenever your colleague deploys the model, you know that model is published and its endpoints are created and a, a, a world whole world can access that model through these endpoints. So these are rest endpoints what it will create. Okay, and whole world can avail the production feature sorry prediction feature of the model. So right from training the model, uh, sorry, right from data cleaning of the model, uh, sorry, of the data, training the model, testing the model, scoring the model, identifying the best performing model, uh, registering the best performing model at the universal model registry service, and then deploying the model. Now all these things are possible at one platform, and it is 
machine learning sorry and it is machine learning service as your machine learning service in order to follow all these steps we have three arrangements here notebooks automated ml and designer now here see what is automated ml automated ml is a very interesting platform where you simply submit a data to it and also submit a kind of algorithm whether it is regression algorithm or classification algorithm or time series algorithm you submit a kind of algorithm to it okay and what that service will do automated ml will do automated ml will create n number of objects for you n number of models for you and will arrange those models in descending order of their performance so in the list of the models you will see a best performing model uh, always at the top okay and in case it also shows you performance of the model in terms of percentage and if you realize that the performance of the model is uh, you know uh, of your expectation that model then you can choose to register to the model registry and that model you can choose even to the deployment automated ml basically is for those who are not good in the development and they are very much in hurry uh, to get the best performing model so within 2 3 hours at the most 2 3 hours you get the best performing model without the help of data scientist okay that is how automated ml helps you okay but you want to do some customization over there like automated ml does not uh, improve the quality of the data it it takes you know uh, data which is already with a improved quality but if you want to improve the quality of the data uh, in your own custom way if you want to apply your customization steps okay you can apply designer but again for designer you may not be essentially from development backer okay so designer again is for those who are not from development background maybe coming from database background or mainframe mainframe background okay but here in the, the difference in between automated ml similarity between both of them is that both of them are gui based tool and codeless app designer is not 100% codeless but still it is 98% codeless means it allows you to do some customization you know by applying or by submitting uh, python code okay so it is again you know 98% codeless but if you want to apply all levels of customization then these tools are not suitable this automation always kill customization wherever automation comes customization runs away okay and if you want to apply all types of customization that you can go with the notebooks in case of notebooks you have to write a python code there so python developers this tool is really good for python developers they will apply all types of customization to what they feel suitable there okay. so wherever you want to apply customization go with the notebook okay and wherever you want to quickly get the model designed you can go with automated design okay you can create a data set through this option you can create your runtime jobs through this option okay different components now they have introduced the concept of component and the detailed study of uh, machine learning uh, services it comes under the certification uh, dp100 dp100 this is for for data scientist okay and there then you know how do you do development using automated ml development using designer development using notebooks everything is covered there so multiple such options are available in as your ml
okay designer let me show you one designer there that may give you further more further better idea so here you observe i already have created a couple of pipelines using this designer maybe this one i think And see from here we are dragging the activities here and drag and drop like tool. This is available. OK, once you drag a specific uh, tool here or a specific component here, you know that tool or that component that can be configured from here. So this is a configuration you can submit here. You don't have to write. Uh, any kind of code, although if you want to add a customization that is possible. OK, but. Most of the operations, what you you need to do, you know, for those operations, components are available. But if there is a specific kind of custom need from here, you know, that custom need can be made by writing a Python script also. Okay, so this is a designer, and then this designer, I simply have to create a data pipeline. And in this data pipeline, just observe all the these steps I am following. You know, without writing any script, I am following the steps to clean the data. So data cleaning, what we are doing here. Okay, data transformation, what we are doing here. And once we get a data transformed data, we are splitting that data uh, into two parts. Okay, one part we will use to train the model. So here I am submitting uh, data to train the model. And which kind of model are we using here? Multi-class uh, logistic regression. So here that model will be trained. OK, and even if I don't know Python, you know, internally it is using the Python to train the model. Then here I am submitting a test data to it. And by submitting the test data, you know, what it will do is it will calculate the performance of the model. And then here we will compare performances of more than one models, one model I will submit here another model. I will submit from this side. And evaluate model will identify the best performing model. It will identify the best performing. So that's how you know uh, a designer can be used to create a data pipeline. Once you create a pipeline, then you know we may have to uh, save that pipeline and submit it. And there are a couple of steps to be followed, including. Uh, manual testing of the uh, model. Okay. Then we will have to register the model. We will have to deploy it on the production environment. Multiple steps. Then we are we can carry here. How do you write notebook? That also would like to show to you. Okay, here I have a couple of notebooks. Okay, let me just show you one of the notebooks just to give you idea. How model creation can be done through. There is an Azure ML SDK what they have designed. OK, this Azure ML SDK you have to install. If it is the Python environment, you will have to install it using pip command. OK, so now I have, uh, the interface what I am using is similar to Jupyter notebook and in this interface, you know, I don't have to submit a pip command, but in case of any other interface you are using, you will have to uh, install this uh, uh, SDK using pip command. And then I will have to apply different uh, SDK commands to work with the model. Okay, here, here, let me show you. I am calculating. Uh, the dependencies among different columns okay, to identify which columns will most uh, uh, mostly affect the decision. Decision, final decision. Okay, here we are using logistic regression. Uh, sorry, here. We are using logistic regression. To so that logistic regression, you know, we are submitting the training data. Fit method is being called here. We are submitting the training data. That model, what I will get to the left side is the trained model. 
on that trained model, then we may be uh, calculating accuracy. We are calculating its performance. So those steps are also there. So multiple such steps you can see here. Once we identify best performing model, we are registering that model to the model registry here it is. So by using Python command, we can register a model. By using UI also, we can register the model. And then we are making the provision to deploy the model. So different step you can see here. So to make uh, the model, uh, uh, to follow the step to make the model deployable. So those multiple steps we are following here. And finally, let me take you to steps where actual deployment is beginning. Here it is. Actual deployment is beginning. Model will be deployed uh, onto the Kubernetes cluster, maybe. Okay, or what type of cluster you may be selecting here. Your model will be deployed there. And then to query the model, you know, here are the commands. Okay, we will query the model. To the model, we will send some data. And based on the data that we will send, that model will revert to you uh, with its prediction. So here we are querying the model. Yes, here we are querying. That's how you know uh, you can do the development using notebooks. Let me make everybody clear that this session is actually uh, covering curriculum of AZ, sorry, AI 900. AI 900. In this uh, month, okay, uh, we are also uh, arranging a session to cover AI 102. AI 102. So there will be session in this month only. Okay, but uh, today's session is centric to AI 900 fundamentals of artificial intelligence. Okay, automated machine learning, we already talked about designer, we already talked about. <laughs> now let us come to. Answer these questions. You would like to train a model without label that groups similar features together. Group similar features together. Without labels. Without labels that group similar feature together. OK, these are the two the key words here without labels. And grouping similar features together. What should be the answer? Let me just check with somebody. Yes, clustering. Absolutely right. The correct answer is clustering. Because in case of uh, supervised learning, you have to give the label because it has to predict some value. And in case of unsupervised learning, you know, which is uh, also called as the clustering, so there you don't submit a label. There what it does is it simply uh, in a group similar uh, data together to create data set. Okay, so it simply clusters the data that's like cluster. Second question. Second question. Let me check what answer has been given. Everybody is giving answer is the regression. Let me hear. Uh, let me read the question. Historic car sale data to train a machine learning model. Model should predict the price of the pre-owned cars. Price of the pre-owned cars based on me model engine size and mileage. So price means one number. Okay, and that's why it is regression. That's why it is regression. Next question, question three. Read it and let me know the answer.
is loan repayment records. So bank wants to know whether a customer has repaid the loan or did not pay the loan. Whatever it has borrowed, whether it has been prepaid or not prepaid. So yes or no. Let us see answer has been given. Classification is correct answer here. Because you are expecting this model to revert to you saying yes or no. Whether a, a customer has repaid the loan or failed in paying the loan. Classification. Yes. Now let us come to. Module three. Fundamentals of computer region. OK, before I go ahead. You know, uh, in case if you have any question on whatever I have covered up till now, please go ahead with your question. If you want more clarification on any point, please let me know. And if you do not want clarification and if you want me to go ahead, mention that also. I got one message to go ahead. Yeah, I will cover some demos. But practical session means you will also be doing the same thing that you have to take care of because here I have to cover lots of things in given time. So I will cover some demos. OK, in ML Studio, we need to do EDA, right? What is EDA? Can you elaborate, please? Is NLP in Azure give similar results as that of chat GPT? No. NLP in Azure gives you exact similar translation. Exploratory data analysis. Exploratory data analytics actually this ML service is not for exploratory data analytics. It is basically for data science. So it is not for exploratory data analysis. For exploratory data analysis, you can use uh, Synapse Analytics. Okay, in Synapse Analytics, there is a, something called as a Synapse Spark. So using that, you can do the things. Or in Databricks, you can do exploratory data analytics. Or using Jupyter uh, Lab or Jupyter Notebook, you can do exploratory data analysis using Python. OK, but uh, Azure ML service is not for exploratory data analytics. In Notebook, you can do it if you want. OK, it is possible. You can do it. OK, so it is not a case that it is not at all possible. Okay, you can do exploratory data analytics using Notebook. OK, but by using automated ML, or designer, uh, exploratory data analytics in uh, EDA is not possible. Okay, but by using notebook, it is possible. What are all other questions? Let me go through. Is NLP in Azure use similar result that of chat uh, chat GPT? No, I I think I made that point clear at the beginning itself. The chat GPT adds its own innovation, and chat GPT does not give you a very brief uh, reply here. NLP in Azure is, uh, is supposed to give you very brief reply. Say if you are giving one sentence and you want its translation into another language, an exact translation it will give. But it will not elaborate and create a essay like you know text for you to answer the questions. OK, practical means using of Azure tool. Yes, I will show you demos. For that purpose, and I have this. I am planning the demos on popular services. Uh, will this be enough for AI 900 or we have another set of training? Uh, whatever I am covering, I will guide you to prepare for AI 900. OK, where you will look for material, how you will prepare for the examination that 
that also I will try to cover. Uh, okay, but you for AI 900, you don't have to attain any session. I think it is really a, a fundamental uh, certification and you can, you know, do it of your own. Okay, uh, before exploratory data analysis should be done outside. Yes, event driven architecture. No, no, here we are talking about exploratory data analysis. Advantages of Azure Studio versus PyCharm. Azure Studio offers you multiple things. Azure Studio offers you versioning of your code. You know, if you uh, uh, link it to GitHub, you know, it offers you uh, even versioning of your code that is not possible perhaps in PyCharm. Okay, and uh, uh, in uh, Azure uh, ML Studio, you get all the things at one place. PyCharm simply allows you de development. Okay, rest of the things for doing a rest of the thing in PyCharm approach, you will have to use other tools like for versioning something else, then for uh, model registration, something else, and for model deployment, something else. Here in Azure ML Studio, you get everything at one place. Any example questions on AI 900? I will cover those questions. Okay, and I will also let you know where you can look for those questions. That also I will uh, let you know. Any prerequisite for this AI 900? No prerequisite for this AI 900. No, anybody can go. Can you post few sample questions for AI 900? Yes, obviously. I will take you to uh, some of the questions and you also can explore it further. You know, at that place, there are 50 questions available. Not all questions I will be in position to cover in available uh, uh, time. Okay, so you uh, the post this session, you can refer to that URL and you can, you know, uh, tour to all those 50 questions. Can you post a few sample questions for uh, that? I will I will guide you. Cost of the examination exam fees. Okay, I think uh, Chaitali will be right person to answer this question. Cost of the examination. Okay, so uh, we'll request a Chaitali, you know, to revert on that. Okay. Yes, it should be probably 4K. Uh, 4K means 4,000 Indian rupees. 4,000 Indian rupees. That is its cost. Okay, let you know in some time. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Resolution. INR. Ah, uh, 4,000 INR. Yes. yes. Uh, okay, I think it is the time for us to uh, move ahead. I am sorry in case if I have missed some question. Just check how I missed it. Chatbot. Is there chatbot service in Azure? Yes, yes. Separate service. A separate service is also available to design and develop chatbots, but otherwise in cognitive services creating chatbot models that is also available. Okay. Uh, okay, after this session, can we go for uh, I will recommend you not to 100% rely on this session. In this session, you know, I will give you uh, steps to prepare for the examination. And, and in case if you religiously follow those steps, pretty sure no, you will have your foundation uh, created better. OK. Uh, little prep, not too extensive preparation, but within three, four days, you know, you can go for the examination. So online documentation is available. I will show you how to go to those documentations. How do you refer to those documentations? OK, that also I will show you. Any else, anything else? 
No, I think I have tried my best to answer all the questions. In case if I have missed some question, you please uh, repeat that question. Please share your number to uh, discuss. Uh, Chaitali will share her number, okay, and will request Chaitali to forward your questions to uh, me so that you know I can revert to your questions. I will request Chaitali to share the number. Being a trainer, I am not supposed to share my number, but I am supposed to answer your each and every query. Okay, we will expect Chaitali to uh, facilitate that communication. Yes, Chaitali has shared her number. Observe. Okay, so you can drop uh, your questions to her. Okay, and uh, she will uh, direct those questions to me or whoever the trainer available. We have the trainer pool available. Thus, anybody can answer your questions. Uh, okay. Going ahead. There are four modules out of which now I am covering a third module and in this module I will take you through uh, some of the labs and demos also. What is computer vision? This is one image given. This might have been an image a frame captured from CCTV camera or an image uploaded or a part of uh, you know video shoot. So from there, okay, we are capturing the image. What computer vision does is it divides that image into something called as the pixels and identifies every pixel with respect to its color and position. So there are columns of the pixel and there are rows of the pixel. So this whole set of pixel looks like a matrix. OK, and that image is digitized in terms of uh, such a matrix where every cell in that matrix represent the color of that piece. OK, so thereby, you know, whole image. Uh, gets a digitized, it's converted into a digital representation, which is in terms of a matrix. And such matrices then are uh, you know, used for the purpose of image processing. Now, what happens in case of uh, in case of CCTV footage or camera footage? That there you get multiple image frames, and these multiple image frames create a video for you. For every image frame, such a matrix is created. For every image frame, such matrix is created. Okay, and then every uh, image frame is analyzed and operated upon you know to give the different and different types of results okay so what type of result computer vision will give to you that also we will see okay but that is the way images are processed that is how images are processed in computer vision here you will get multiple types of uh, services image classification in this image classification it will Look into this image and it will tell is this image a taxi or a bus or a train or a cycle or a car. Uh, say it is classifying the image. OK, here what it is doing that on this image it is identifying the objects that this is this is a rear part of the bus. This is whole bus. This is a car. And not only it is identifying the objects there, it is surrounding those objects with a specific re colored rectangle and labeling those objects. Bus and bus cyclist, cyclist that way. Cyclist is identified. So not only it is identifying the objects, multiple types of objects in the image, it is also surrounding that object uh, with a rectangle, okay, and can give you. Uh, further more details about that object. How sure it is about, uh, you know, its uh, uh, object identification. How sure it is about that this is a bus. How sure it is about that uh, this is the car. Okay, so it will also uh, tell you uh, it's a confidence level. Okay, semantic segmentation. 
Now here, you know, in medical science also, it can be used like when MRI is given uh, to the system from the MRI, that system can identify which part is a, you know, in case if it is the MRI of the uh, stomach, then it can highlight which part is a pancreas, which part is a liver, which part is a spleen, you know, different parts from that MRI, it can identify. So that is, and it can show those parts in their different colors. It can highlight those parts in different colors. That is semantic segmentation. Image analysis. Image analysis. So whenever this image is submitted to it, what is there in that image? You know, it will tell you. A person with a dog on a street. A person might have taken a dog for the walk, but it will analyze the image and it will tell you uh, more about that image. In case if there is an image of uh, you know, people within some uh, mart, inside mart, say, you know, so it will identify that this is the background is of the mart, and these are the persons who are maybe you know uh, customers there in that mart. So it will analyze that image and it will tell you what that image is for. Face detection. Here it is. It will detect the faces. Okay. No, it will not be in position to tell the names of the faces here, names of the people here. You know, for that purpose, uh, we may have to apply a different approach. We may have to train the model to identify uh, faces, okay, and tell the names of those people. But here, the basic feature is that is advanced feature. The basic feature here is so we are identifying just the faces only, okay, without disclosing the names of the people. But in face analysis, there is an arrangement which can identify the name of the person and which can identify emotions on the face, whether it is angry face, whether it is a you know, sad face, or whether it is happy face. So that also is possible. Optical character recognition. Now, this is an image wherein there are some you know, text appearing. OK, so it can read this text. It can read this text. So multiple such applications are available there for computer vision. OK, and you know. Now this technology is not only limited to Facebook. Basically, this technology is not you know, invented for Facebook. Facebook is a you know, terror. It's a, a last option. But otherwise in industry, you know, this technology is being used everywhere. It is being used everywhere. Like satellite images can be used. Uh, satellite images of the landscape can be used to identify the objects. MRI can be used to highlight the you know, different body parts. There are many applications wherein, you know, these uh, computer vision as of now is being used. In crime also, whenever CCTV is already capturing the moments of the people and that whole data may be submitted to the system and may, the system will keep monitoring uh, whether there is a face or whether there is a vehicle you know, against whom there is a lookup notice already released. Okay, and in case if it happens, you know, your system uh, should have a provision uh, to raise the alarm giving to the uh, sorry raise the alarm to the patrolling system you know, and giving the details of the location of that person giving the details of the location of that uh, vehicle so that patrolling van uh, or patrolling system can reach to the place and uh, take the person or vehicle under control computer vision services in azure just have a look at this list and try to see how this service is rich in its uh, uh, features. OK. This is about computer vision only. I haven't yet come to you know NLP, natural language processing. So that is a separate list again. But here we are talking about computer vision only. So face detection, image analysis, smart cropping, OK, optical character recognition. 
these things are possible in custom uh, computer vision. In custom vision, we can create our, we can train the models to identify different uh, images. For example, there is a manufacturing unit, manufacturing n number of products. Okay, and then the, all those products are coming uh, to the packaging uh, department in one channel. And whenever all those products reach to the uh, packaging department, then we want a system to segregate those products. Like product one to go into one part of packaging uh, section and another product to go to another part of pack packaging section. And this segregation we should do automatically. There we can impl implement the custom vision service. This custom vision service has already been trained to identify these uh, products. And thereby this custom vision uh, service will then direct the first product to the first packaging section, second product to second packaging section that way. One more application of custom vision is now whenever you go to uh, mar, um, sorry, mall, there you carry one basket, trolley uh, basket. You keep, uh, you pick up the items from the shelf, put onto uh, into those baskets, okay, and then you go to the payment counter where manually every item is scanned and then bill is created. How do you think a system, you know, which will monitor the product that you have lifted from the uh, shelf, okay, and immediately it will add that product into your bill. Or if you are doing an opposite operation, like you are picking up the product from the basket, and putting it on the shelf, you know, it will deduct that item. It will remove that item from the bill. So in case if it, this system, this kind of system is designed, which is monitoring uh, what product you have picked up, it will identify uh, that product and will decide, you know, uh, uh, whether to add that product into the bill or whether to remove that product from the bill. That is again a custom feature. Face detection, whenever you are reaching to the company, you don't have to uh, uh, do the biometric automatically it will read your face and will uh, mark your attendance not only that it will keep identifying the faces unknown faces in the uh, company premises and in case if it identi identifies unknown face then it will immediately inform to the uh, system or immediately inform to the security that at this place it has identified unknown face Form recognizer, that example also I gave you. The different types of forms can be automatically uh, digitized. Okay, I will take you to the uh, computer vision service. Okay. And uh, so let me take you to the computer vision service first. Okay, but uh, before we go ahead, let us quickly have a look at some of the features. What they are doing is they are offering you computer vision service uh, in two ways. One is called as the computer vision and another is called as the custom vision. In computer vision, you will get pre-trained models and they have trained that model on 10,000 different predefined classes. So those models have been trained to identify uh, buildings, skyscrapers, lakes and rivers, gardens, market, streets, okay? people, animals like cats and dogs. You know, so those models have already been trained on around 10,000 different uh, objects. Okay, And whenever you submit any image to it, immediately it identifies uh, that image there. And here in this uh, diagram, in this image, you will see not only it is identifying the person, it is also identifying age of the person. Okay, it will identify even age of the person also. So what kind of information it can give whenever you submit the image to it? Okay, whether that image is a uh, adult image? No. Is, a, is it a Reese image? No. Is it a gore image? No. Okay, so what kind of image it is that it can uh, tell you by giving the caption? A group of people walking on a sidewalk. So it will give you the caption also by analyzing the image. Image description and tag generated. 
So here are the tags that in the image it has identified buildings, it has identified uh, it has identified people using jeans, it has identified people have uh, have had footwear. You know, it is a street, it is outdoor image. People are wearing jackets. You know, it is a city view. People are appearing there. So some of the tags also it comes up with. This detection, content moderation, text. Content moderation. Content moderation means, you know, it is moderating the content and accordingly, guaranteedly telling you that this is not adult image, this is not RISI image, and this is not guru image. That also it recognizes. Okay, and uh, this content moderation can be used to block the images which you do not want, you know, to display. Okay, such images can be completely blocked also. Okay, now in case of image classification, what it does that whenever you submit a photo of some apple to it, and it will identify that this is apple, this is banana. This is orange, such type of uh, you know uh, uh, photographs you can submit to it, and it will identify the class of that uh, photo. If you are submitting uh, photos of multiple fruits, there it will do object detection by identifying which fruit it is. This is orange. This is apple. This is banana. So image classification or object detection, you know, that is possible. <clears throat> Detecting faces. Okay, here see. It is it has identified that this is uh, a photograph of a mart. Okay, now analysis uh, uh, caption hasn't been mentioned here, but otherwise it will analyze that this is a background is of a mart. Okay, and there are two people here. One person is capturing. Uh, uh, photo of another person and both of them are not both of them, but at least the uh, person of, who, uh, of whom phase is visible and that phase is happy face. So that's all things what it will detect from the given image detecting faces. Reading the text. It can even handwritten document you can submit to it and it will read that text. If you submit JPG image photo uh, sorry, PDF image, it will read the text. OK, let me give you an example of this also. So I have brought multiple examples for you. OK, reading the receipts or this is a form recognizer. So that is also possible. OK, so just happy attempt to these three questions and then we will go to some of the demos. First question, you plan to use build an application that compares faces for, for similarity and identifies individuals. What service would you use? Now, one more thing would like to bring to everybody's notice. Face related service are avail available in computer vision also, but those are with very much restrictions. You know, those services do not identify people. Means by their name. Those services cannot compare to faces also. OK, in computer vision, what kind of uh, you know, face related service is available that it, uh, it identifies faces only? And looking at the face, it can identify age also. That's over. But if you want it to identify uh, people all, uh, by their names, if you want it to compare, that this person is available, he can be seen in this photograph as well as in that photograph, you know, then you will have to go to face services. So face service is separate service. Available. And face service is not available for everybody. OK, it is very much restricted. You know, you have to register for it. Your background is verified and then you will be given an access to the face service. OK, so let me just check what answer. Have okay, everybody has mentioned about face service. Okay, and I again repeat. It is a face service because here it is asking you to compare two faces. Okay, computer vision does not compare two faces. 
computer vision simply identifies faces, show those faces in the rectangle background, and can uh, show you the age, predicted age from the image. Okay, rest of the face related services are available under face service. Next question. Let me verify the first question and it is correct. Go to the second question. You want to use a custom vision and language service. Now this is really interesting question. You also want developers to require only one key and endpoint to access all your services. I think this question came a little early. I wanted to dis discuss this point, but perhaps this point is later. But let me tell you one thing. Let me take you to uh, uh, here. Here, let me take you to AI one zero. This was true. Just give me a minute. OK. So now see, this is custom vision service. This custom vision service, you know, can uh, uh, see helps you to train the model. OK, uh, as per your custom requirements. Form recognizer. This is basically for recognizing the forms only. Now, when you create a custom vision, you know, it becomes a standalone service which will have its own key and own URL. Okay. Form recognizer will have its own key and own URL. But if you want to use custom vision and form recognizer together, you know, there you will have you for every service, you will have separate URL and access keys. If you are using five different services together, then dealing with FIU URLs and FIU access keys, you know, it will always be time very confusing and difficult to deal with. So what they are giving is they are giving you one service called as a Chandra Cognitive. OK, Chandra Cognitive give, will give you single URL through which you know, multiple services you can have. Chandra, through one URL, you can avail multiple services. OK, going back to. So you want to use a custom vision and language service, so multiple services you want to use. You also want a developer to require only one key and endpoint to access all your services. So which kind of resource will you create? Okay, that is the question. And let me check whether somebody has given answers and yes. All of you have given answers as cognitive services, so it is absolutely right. Let us go to the question three. You want to extract information and perform semantic recognition on the extracted field. Fields. What service would you use? Extract information and perform semantic recognition on the extracted field. What service would you use? Okay, let me check what answer I have to give it. OCR, optical character recognizer. Let us verify whether the answer is correct or not. And it is not correct. It is form recognizer. It extracts information from the submitted form. OK, and segregate that information in terms of different fields. So from the form, it will pick up. If it is a uh, 
receipt generated or bill generated okay so from that bill it will pick up bill number and it will you know, consider that bill number value as a bill number field it will pick up date of the bill it will pick up uh, name of the customer and these date of the fee bill and name of the customer will go uh, under these uh, different field categories okay so form recognizer is the correct answer here and not optical character recognition okay so so that's all about uh, module 3 okay and now it is the time for us it's not a extracted info let me just to extract it needs ocr if form is image right right down the line it is using uh, ocr there are two i think uh, uh, approaches like uh, read api and ocr api so using those two apis it internally uh, you know, uh, uses these apis and read the information okay but what the question is extracted fields how does it classify extracted information in terms of a field you know that's why it is a form recognizer and not a optical character record have i answered that question optical character recognizer reads it as a text everything as a text okay, and is not able to segregate the things <laughs> before i go to this okay let me take you to some of the demos here so i already have told you that this different uh, kinds of uh, services the cognitive services i already already have created okay now let me take you through some code okay to know one more thing i can tell you one more thing i can tell you there is a custom vision service okay no first of all let me take you through oh, sorry to some computer vision uh see here this is visual studio code installed in my local machine i will use it for uh, the development but this visual studio code will get a uh, analysis of images done and other uh, image related operations from the cognitive circuits okay so the first of all let me uh, show you how i am referring uh, the cognitive service in this code so here is a environment file cognitive service endpoint here is the cognitive service endpoint http colon slash slash chandra cognitive dot cognitive service dot azure dot com which service is this let me show you so here is the chandra cognitive key endpoints http colon slash slash chandra cognitive dot chandra sorry cognitive service dot azure dot com this url i am mentioning here key here is the key this key there are two keys one of the keys i am mentioning there okay and thereby you know uh, though the service is existing on the cloud from my local machine into this code i will refer to that service now there is the api they are keeping So here you observe the code. I don't expect you to go into the details of the. But here is the you know opportunity for us to understand what kind of uh, you know arrangements are available to work with the service. So we can uh, interact with the service uh, through the code. Okay, remember in AI nine zero zero, 
they will not give you snapshot of the code and uh, you will be asked some you know, questions on the uh, uh, code that that will that is not a part of ai uh, 900 but just try to understand what we can make possible that is very important okay so here we will receive an endpoint and here we will receive a key okay which image to refer to? So I am submitting path to some image. It is street dot jpg. Uh, JPG. Here is this image. Let me open that image, and let me show that image. What uh, of what it is? Okay. So here is the image. Okay, and that image does not have any caption. I want uh, this service to analyze the image and create a caption for for me. OK, it is a bare image only. So that image path I am referring here. Images is a uh, folder here and streets.jpg is a uh, image there inside. OK, and then I am creating something called as a CV client. Now this CV client, computer vision client, you know, is a agent in between this code and uh, the service which is running in the cloud, computer vision service or cognitive service, you know, that is running on the cloud. Okay, I am calling analyze, analyze image method. Analyze image method is written here. Okay, and I am submitting it image file. Image file is uh, the same image a person uh, who has taken a dog for a walk. For that image, I want it to give me, you know, these are different uh, parametric values. I want it to give me a description, tags, categories, any brands inside that image, any what are all objects inside that image, and yes or no, whether that image is uh, adult or not. So here, It will do analysis of the image for that purpose on the client. I will call an API method. Then it will get a caption or captions from the image. So it may get multiple captions also. OK, because sometimes, you know, some images have multiple things to uh, to come out of. Uh, sorry, multiple things which are coming out of that image. OK, and a couple of other things. What is the category of that image? What are all different tags? Tag means what are all different objects existing in that image? You know, what are all different brands appearing in that image? What are all different objects appearing in that image? And here then, okay, we want uh, it to you know, highlight those objects by drawing the rectangles. Okay, so it, wow, I, I want to see that image after uh, due. Uh, highlighting the objects on that image. Here it will have highlighted image. OK, I am asking you to convert that image into thumbnail, into small image. I want to change the size of that image. OK, and I want you to save that image onto the disk by this name. So it is thumbnail.png. Thumbnail.png. Let me delete this file because I want it to recreate it. Yes. OK, I want to run this code and then we will uh, see what information it is giving about that image. So I'm putting this code to run. Python. Image dot. Image hyphen. Dot file. Now let us look into uh, the response, what it has generated. But before I look into the response, let me show you that image again. And then we can see uh, the response. So it has a broader description. A person walking a dog on the side. That is the description what it has brought. OK, the image is not the indoor, but the outdoor. And how much it is confirmed? What is its level of the confidence that is also appearing? 
रोड बिल्डिंग स्ट्रीट लैंड वेहीकल वे टॉप वेहीकल कार साइड वॉक ऑल दीज आर दिंग्स वॉट इट इज इट इज इट इज इट इज इट कैन इट कैन सी इन टू द इमेज वॉट आर ऑल ऑब्जेक्ट्स कार टैक्सी पर्सन डॉग सो दीज आर द ऑब्जेक्ट्स वॉट इट कैन सी ratings is this image adult no is it rishi no is it gor no and then hereby we are generating the thumbnail so image is a, in the large size and here is the thumbnail what it has generated if you recall just now i deleted that uh, dpg but now it has recreated it and you can see the small size the image but has created a thumbnail also just a minute here is a small size Okay, object or JPG also it has created. So let us see what it is. Uh, what kind of image it has created there? Let us. So observe there. It has identified this object as a car, this object as a person, this object as a taxi, this object as a dog. It has identified the objects also. So you can write a Python code. You know, to get these things done from pre-trained model in cognitive service, pre-trained model in cognitive service. Okay, so that API then you will have to use. So, being a developer, you will have to you know work with this API. You have to practice this API rigorously. Okay, and thereby you can you know write a code, get the image analysis. Okay, that's how image analysis can be done. Okay, would like to check with you. Any question on? Uh, I have a couple of questions. Let me. Uh, yes, uh, I am planning to have a ten minutes break. I was just looking for some you know, logical, uh, uh, logical break. I am looking for logical break. And it is not non-stop. We will have a break. I understand you know, sitting four hours and listening uh, somebody is always a difficult. It won't be possible to take a break in this four hours webinar. Acha Chaitali has written, but we'll try uh, try to give at least ten minutes break. Huh. Yes, 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 yes. We will we will take a break. We are on Vande Bharat. No stops until this. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Yes, there will be a stop, but this is not a stop for uh, travelers. And this is not a stop for travel. This is a stop for uh, maybe driver of the vehicle. Uh, sorry, driver of the Vande Bharat, which may want to interact with the station master uh, to exchange some information. Okay, is it the car? Can it detect number plate? Yes, yes, OCR. It can detect number plate also, and it is possible through OCR. That is possible. How did it know the difference between car and taxi? No, for taxi, if you see that image, for taxi, if you see that image, there is a, the taxi and car. See, at the top of the taxi, there is something. Now it also has identified. It would have identified this as a taxi only, but I think it has recognized this as a part of something background, and that's why it has considered it as a car. On the other hand, it has identified. I don't know what it is called as, but there is a uh, you know some kind of board at the top of the uh, roof of the uh, taxi. You know, uh, if that is appearing, then it is a taxi, and if that is not appearing, it is a say car. In this case, it has identified it as a car because perhaps it has missed that part. Okay, uh, it did not recognize it as a board, but it might have recognized this as a something background. So that the uh, can okay. yes, number plate can be detected. Uh, can we read a text using OCR from an image containing text and tables? Huh? I will come to it. Can we read an organized text? I will come to it. Multiple tables and text paragraphs from 
from an image and get it in the organized format. Uh, yes, it is possible. It can do that also. OK. Achha, we call it the taxi magnet. OK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, thanks. Taxi magnet. Why do they call it the type magnet? I don't know. It is possible to predict the picture or data which is blur or with a noise with a low confidence level. Yes, yes, it can recognize the objects, but there then its confidence level will go down. That is one thing. And second thing is, in case if it is finding it really difficult to recognize anything from there, then uh, you know it uh, uh, shows you the error that way. It can be sticked using magnet. I doubt it. I can stick uh, stickers using magnet in my you know, refrigerator, but in case if somebody somebody uh, sticks it using magnet, electromagnet. Okay, okay, maybe electromagnet. Ah, that may be possible. Electromagnet. OK. So. Uh, yes, uh, round two uh, hours are over and it is the time for us to take one small break. OK, it is around uh, 12 12. OK, let us uh, resume our session by. Let's resume. Session. Take a minute. If a detection of a plant species is to be done, how can it be done? Considering the same color, dark and green. No, no. Uh, in case of that, means I already have developed a model on that by uh, submitting a leaf of the uh, species, you know, uh, photographs of uh, different leaves taken from different angles. Okay, so that I already have done. So color may be green for all the leaves, but shape of the uh, leaf, measurements of the leaf, they are different. And using that information, it can identify uh, uh, the species. OK, with the data annotation and training the model. Yes, I did train. I used the custom uh, region. I uploaded different. I will show you how to do the custom region also. I will show you. So let's resume the session by 12.25. Twelve twenty-five p.m. Okay, okay. I will go on the mute. I will stop sharing the screen, and we will resume our session by twelve twenty-five.
Hi guys, as we are on break, uh, make sure you redeem the learning achievement batch for AI 900. So as you can see on this screen, the steps to redeem the batch. Also, the steps has been mentioned in the chat box with URL. So make sure you follow the steps and get your learning achievement batch activated.
Uh, yes, CB, so you can start. OK. <clears throat> I'm sharing my screen. I have created one custom vision service. Uh, here it is. See Chandra custom vision. And I opened its portal and here I am at the portal. OK, and uh, here now we will, I will uh, bring to your notice. How do we create a project? OK, and how uh, we will train the model to identify the services uh, to identify the objects. So for that purpose, what I do? This is a custom portal. Let me just delete this project. I will create it again. So I'm creating a new project. And in this project, I will uh, upload the images. OK, I will identify objects in every project. OK, I will show it which object on that image is where. OK, thereby I will train it and once I train it, then it will itself identify the object. So I'm clicking on new project. I may be giving some name to the project. So. Traffic safety. Uh, is the name I'm giving. OK, identify traffic objects. Identify. Objects in traffic. Uh, draw cognitive. It is object detection, so I will go with a object detection. Classification and object detection. In object detection, there will be one image having multiple objects and it has to show me in that image at what place uh, a specific object is existing. In classification, I will submit one image and it will show me of what object that image is. So that is classification. OK, so general uh, different uh, domains are available. OK, food domain is also available there. Different domains are available. OK, I will I will go with the general and I will ask it to create the project. So one project has been created and then. I will ask it to upload images. So here is the add images. OK, now in my local machine. I am keeping Images just a minute. Here are some images. Okay, let me show you these images with a large icon. Huh. So here is a there is there is a pedestrian. Here are pedestrians. Here are pedestrians. No, here, here are cyclists. Here is a cyclist. Okay. So all these images are of cyclist and pedestrian, and I want it to identify you know uh, pedestrian and cyclist if both of them are appearing in the same image so these images i want to upload okay so for that purpose here i am clicking on add images and i will ask it to select all images yes i have asked it to select all images i am clicking on open OK, and it has identified 33 images. OK, and what normally it does is in order to better uh, train the model, you know, for one uh, type of object, it needs at least 15 images. So there are two types of objects here. So 32 images, 33 images are sufficient. Cyclist is one object and pedestrian is another object. OK, so upload 33 images. So now it is uploading. All the images and in every image, then I will have to help it to identify location of the object. Clicking on done. Yes, all these are untagged images as of now. That's why you know it is showing me all these are untagged images. Okay, now to these images, I want to tag them. OK, so I will have to select the image one by one. So I'm clicking on the first image. 
and here what it is asking me to create an object how over and select the region in the image so here is image okay i if i hover to other parts you know it is identifying a part of the image okay but if i select this one that will be the major part of the cyclist okay so i am selecting this and i have to mention a tag to it so he is a cyclist Cyclist. Cyclist. C Y C L E. Acha. C Y C L E. Cyclist. Huh. Yes. So, and let me increase the size so that you know now the complete image is covered. So I am covering whole image. Okay. Ah. Huh. This way. Again, cyclist. Okay. Plus, and yes, in this image, I have identified the cyclist and other things I am not interested in. So I click here to move to the another image. In this image, again, I have to identify cyclist with a cycle. So there are two, three objects here actually. One is a cyclist, second is a pedestrian, and third is a uh, dog. But dog is not my target. So I will not uh, train the model for dog. I even do not have you know 15 images for dog. I have only uh, images for cyclist and ped pedestrian. Okay, so here it's say cyclist. Okay, let me increase its size. Uh, cyclist. And here is the pedestrian. Now they may be overlapping, but still major part of the pedestrian is visible to me. Okay, and that is appearing inside this rectangle. So that pedestrian box I will select. Pedestrian. And I will label it. Yes, so cyclist and pedestrian have been identified inside this image going ahead. So when I select that pedestrian, I am actually giving the coordinates of that image, okay, so that that um, uh, so taking those coordinates into account, part of that image it will use for the purpose of the training. Next image. So there are 33 images which I will have to, uh, you know, uh, select here. Okay, so this image now. Now again here, let me just adjust it so that even cyclists also uh, to come within the image. So cyclist. Going ahead. Here. Yes, cyclist. Going ahead. So I am little bit fast forwarding. Again, here bus is appearing, but I am not interested in bus object. I, I am interested in referring to these two cyclists. So this is one cyclist and this is another cyclist going next going next again cyclist here oh, yes cyclist okay now here see it is showing me rectangle around wheel I want a cyclist there. Okay, that's why I will, I will select this rectangle. Right. Yes. Next. Remember, this is a UI what they are giving me to select the objects. If I have to do this programmatically, this is possible doing a programmatically also. In that case, then for every image coordinates, I will have to submit in the form of the JSON. You know, that is then a really strenuous job. For every image, you will have to calculate the coordinates and prepare a JSON, okay, and then submit it. That is really a strenuous job. This seems really uh, handy. Next. Cyclist. And really very handy. Okay, with less time, I can, you know, uh, visit multiple images. This is one image. 
another image. At the beginning, I can see almost all images are having cyclist. OK, but there are pedestrian images also. Cyclist. Cyclist. It's cyclist. Cyclist. So instead of the cyclist images, if you have uh, images of uh, now this is pedestrian. Images of leaves of different species. You know, to those leaves, you will have to name. And this is the leaf of this species. This is the leaf of this species. Pedestrian. More images you uh, train the model. Model shows more accuracy. Remember. Pedestrian, sorry, this is cyclist. Cyclist. So observe here, there are images in different colors. Images from different angles. OK, and variety of the images, if you cover for every object, you know, you get better performance. This is. Pedestrian. 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 We are about to conclude now. I think uh, I have marked 33. I have marked around 33 images here. Now there are four images, so everybody here we will have to you know, mark as a pedestrian. Pedestrian. These are three pedestrians here. Pedestrian. Yes. OK, all images are over. And we already have submitted all images uh, to the model. We have submitted all images to the model. OK, and now here you can see. All these are tagged images and there is no image remaining untagged. 
Oh, there are two images on tagged. OK, let me. Tag them also. Here is a cyclist and here is a pedestrian. OK, I have marked them correctly. Uh, fine. So I'm done with all images and now there is no untagged image appearing. All are tagged images. OK, and there are 16 cyclists and 19 pedestrian images. So total 35. Total 35. OK, it is time for us to train the model now. So I'm clicking on the model. OK, what it has done up till now from every image, it has noted uh, the coordinates of the image and the labels what we have given, tags what we have given. Now let us start training. I will go into quick training here. And now it is going to take some time, maybe 10, 15 minutes, you know, to complete the process of training. And thereafter, then we will move ahead. In the meantime, now I take you to some code. Yes, I already have taken you through image analysis. So this code, let me close. Object detection. OK. I will show you a couple of uh, scripts here. OK, which we can, uh, which we need to write you know, when you want to train the model through the code. OK, up, uh, just now we have trained the model you know, through UI, but this code okay, is there to train the model. Uh, upload images, so observe here. Get project. OK, if you recall, I just created a uh, project using portal, but here is a command you know, to get the reference to the existing project. There is a command to create the project through the code also. I am getting a reference to the existing project here and in that project then here i want it to upload the images so here is a, a way uh, again i repeat you don't have to bother about um, you don't have to bother about this code just try to understand how powerful the features are okay if you look at this uh, json you know, there you will see only coordinates are mentioned. So I'm opening that JSON. You know, only coordinates are mentioned. For every image, coordinates are mentioned. OK, and doing this thing manually is always a cumbersome. OK, so that JSON I will have to submit. I am submitting images as well as uh, JSON here. And here we are mentioning the region and thereby we are uploading the images. So with this, what it is going to do is it will upload the images and for every image it will pick up the coordinates from this JSON. OK, and it'll, it will assign uh, coordinates with every image. OK, and thereby it will upload images. OK, and once it uploads the images. OK, it will also train. Uh, the model it will train the model. OK, so both things it will do. OK, upload images and it will train the model. After it has trained the model, then by using the code, you can test the model. So here is a way to test the model. OK, so this is a way. To test the model, OK, and then I mean to say I want to bring to your notice that you know, training and testing can be done not only through UI, you can do it through. Uh, um, uh, code also. OK, in the meantime, let me just see the progress. OK, it is still training. OK, let it train. The point what I want to bring to your notice is. This is the way any kind of model can be trained here. Now it is a model uh, with uh, objects in the traffic, but you can train the model uh, uh, of the uh, manufactured material. 
you can train the model with a different uh, uh, say, flowers uh, of species or leaf of species or uh, surrounding of every tree. OK, that also you can use to train the model. So there are multiple. Uh, there are ways to train different type of models and then we can test and can use that model uh, into our production. So that's how object detection uh, works. OK, it will uh, take a longer time. I cannot wait until okay, whenever it completes, then we will go back and have a look at it. OK, in the meantime, I'm taking you back to the slides. But before I go ahead uh, with the slides, any question on this? Please go ahead for any question on this. This model is a saved there. Means once that model is created, you know, I will have to publish that model. I will have to calculate its performance and then I will have to publish that model. And whenever I publish that model, you know, that model gets published into its own environment and thereby then I can and I use that model. To that model, then it will give me URL. That URL I can use in my client application. Uh, necessary credentials I will have to use in my client application and in my client application. Uh, you know, you can use that model for the prediction. Could you please share the full course document for the certification? Uh, yes, yes, give me some time. See, I am planning to uh, take you all of you into uh, you know, how you prepare for the examination. So give me some time. OK, there I will show to you uh, the place where you can see complete uh, uh, course documentation. I will take you to there also, uh, to that place also. We need to do this exercise with the thousands of images. What is the advantage of using VS Code over Jupyter? Uh, yes, that is a good question. Uh, more images you submit, more performance you can experience. OK, that is one thing. The another thing is. Advantages of using VS Code over Jupyter. What are? There is no specific advantage of uh, VS Code. I always find, uh, you know, using VS Code a little bit handy. Uh, uh, it is because, you know, it gives me. Uh, say completion, uh, text completion, command completion. When I mention a class name and press a dot, you know, what are all methods or fields available within that? That is what we call as the auto completion. You know, auto completion is available in VS Code. I doubt whether it is available in uh, Jupyter Notebook, okay, or whether it's a full support is available there in Jupyter Notebook. But otherwise, I normally find VS Code to be more uh, comfortable for developer to use. Can we directly use Jupyter code while exposing code as an API? Uh, what is this question? While exposing code as an API. After all, Jupyter notebook will be used by developer only. Well, I'm not pretty clear about this question. Anybody in case if uh, uh, can answer this question, please come, uh, come ahead. Can we expose model client code as API? Model client code. The code that I am showing to you is not a client code. No, it is actually server side code. So you are writing a server side code and your code further will be executed by REST API. What your code you are writing here that you can uh, you know, uh, you can expose it through the rest endpoints. So what your code we are writing here, like here you see, I am uploading uh, the things. Here I am uploading the thing. The product GPT. Here I am uploading something. Okay, so I have written a code here, but in your web application, at the server side, 
you from from the client side you will receive the jpt to up, jpg to upload and the server side will upload that image so the code that is in front of you is the server side code and to this code uh, you will access from the client side okay now in order to access it from the client side there are again two approaches uh, like uh, you know either you expose this code through rest endpoint that is one way possible or other way possible is you know at the client side it will just come to the server side will run a com server side component and the server side component then will run this code that is another way possible let me give you example in case if you are from java background then either you can use servlet jsp or you can use the rest api so your this code will go into servlet as servlet gets executed at the server side so this code will get executed at the server side or otherwise you can expose this code to the, through the rest points some of the uploaded images are not on pedestrian why tag them as a pedestrian ha uh, fine see i wanted to create two categories that's why either i cannot tag them i can ignore them that is possible i can ignore them but there is one uh, you know constraint that there should be 15 images at least so just to meet that count you know i uh, say mark them as a pedestrian because i was not really sure if i don't mark them whether the count will reach or go beyond 15 and i doubt it will go because now count of pedestrian is 16 hmm. some of the uploaded images are not on the not on pedestrian why tag them uh, okay uh, can we upload live satellite images yes we can upload live satellite images also as uh, as uh, we can upload uh, cctv footage so as we can upload cctv footage we can upload live satellite images also vector db dbs and what point of time they are used in ai ml vector databases you are talking about or uh, vector databases okay okay just remind me before we conclude the session i will come back yes any other question have i missed expose model client okay okay i think yes now i have got your question uh, i agree i have exposed a, a client code there okay i agree it is not a best practice ideally what i would have done that i would mention this uh, uh, client code on the key vault and my python code will pick it up from the key vault okay so that i would have done ideally and thereby i would have not exposed uh, client code the way my code is exposing now okay. in that case my code will come from key vault any other question i have missed okay uh, not able to really uh, check whether i have missed any question okay, we will request you to paste your question again in case if i have missed it yeah okay in the meantime see model has been trained model has been trained you know and if you want to do a quick test okay here is a button available okay here wherever is your browse local files now let me browse for some of the model files so maybe this model i am uh, submitting to it for the purpose of the testing okay and what it has done let us see pedestrian 99% so it has identified that it is pedestrian that's how you know my model is ready okay what here after i will do if i want to test it again with some another model or some some another image maybe uh, this image okay 
and what I, what it has identified. Let us see. Pedestrian 99%, cyclist 99%. Why cyclist is appearing twice? I don't know. Achha, achha. Okay. So it has considered pedestrian as one image. Here is a cyclist. Here is a pedestrian. And both of them, it has put into one image. Okay. And considering it to be a cyclist. So there it is going with a low confidence. Okay. Fine. So that's how we can test uh, uh, these things. Okay. And after that, then. Uh, uh, we can uh, deploy this okay, predictions. A okay, training we have done, we can deploy it. It's been done. Okay, here are some parameters like project ID and other things. What you are getting here. OK, I did a quick testing also. Uh, the option for deployment. Performance. OK, publish here it is. When I click on publish, you know, this model will be made available in the production environment and thereafter you, know, you can use that model. So when I click on publish, OK, this model name is important now. OK, that I will have to use it a client side application at the time of doing the prediction. You know, so traffic safety. Traffic safety, I can change this name and I can give a different name than project name. The prediction resource. Chandra custom vision prediction here. I want it to. Uh, say publish the model. I can publish it into Chandra cognitive also. OK, at both the places I can publish it. Okay, I may be selecting for Ch Chandra custom uh, prediction. And thereafter, then the, this product, uh, this model will be made available for production. Anyway, this is how it works. OK, I am running a short of time, so I have to you know, go to another code. Uh, so let me take you to another code and I will. Uh, you know, fish finish this another code uh, quickly. So that then I can uh, take you to uh, the important points to be taken care while preparing for the examination. OK, so it has also been published. OK, so model has been published and I can go to. Publish prediction URL. Okay, here is the prediction URL. OK, and then uh, model name. Published as. So this URL I will need. OK. Published as this model name I will need. This is iteration ID that I will need. OK, and using all these things, then I can utilize this model. In my application. Testing here we can utilize and we can submit that information here. So prediction key product child model name. Prediction in point, all that information I can submit here into this ENV file. OK, and then this code. This code can do the testing of the uh, or can be used for the purpose of the production, the client side. This code can be uh, can can do actual prediction. So that's how you know uh, object detection and prediction can be done. Working with uh, computer uh, vision or custom vision that also I have shown to you. OK, yes. Now let me come to the next code. That is also really interesting one. OK. <coughs> Speech translation, but before we go for speech translation, let me take you through a couple of slides uh, here. Natural language processing. This is the last module. So, and then I will take you to the speech translation, and thereafter, then we will go for the next topic.
text analysis and entity recognition means you will give it the text okay and from the text it will identify many things what is the sentiment of the text okay so what we will do i will uh, submit some of the reviews regarding some hotel okay and looking at those reviews we will uh, so it will tell me what kind of sentiment it is whether it is positive sentiment review negative sentiment review all those things it will tell me speech recognition and synthesis translation translating that text into some different language okay so multiple such things are possible in nlp multiple such things are possible uh okay conversational bot that also uh, 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 uh that service is also available there okay and i already have discussed with you about uh, conversational bot now how does it work and so on okay but in nlp these are the couple of heads come language uh, understanding speech translation and bot service all these are the parts of Excuse me, NLP on Azure. Out of which the speech recognition I will take you through, okay, and uh, text translation also I will take you through. Okay, I think I have received some questions. Let me just very. Can we export and use the models on the edge device? Yes, it is possible. Once you create a model, you can. uh deploy it on h device also we shall spend more time on nlp it's in the similar iot scenario uh, yes yes so it is deployable on h devices uh, okay so speech so let me take you through the code only okay and thereby let us try to understand more and more about speech recognition so here i have some code uh, with me so let me first of all take you to the text analysis and in this text analysis just observe there are multiple reviews so this is the review about some hotel okay and this review has been written in english there is the another review also and it seems written in uh, english one more review in english Okay, one more review in English, and this is a review. I don't know in which language it has been written. I again will have to you know use its NLP feature to identify and detect language. So it should tell me which language it has been written in. Okay, and it is it is uh, this is a review written in Hindi. So there are multiple languages these reviews have been written within. Okay, and. i wanted to read these reviews one by one and uh, you know uh, uh, for that review everything what it can do you know it should do so what i wanted to do okay here again end points i am submitting yes cognitive client has been created and on that cognitive client here is a api to ask it to detect the language so there are some reviews in english some reviews in hindi and some reviews in some other language i know what language it is because this code i have written okay uh, so it has to detect the language it has to let me know sentiment whether it is positive or whether it is mix or whether it is negative extract key phrases from that tree so important key phrases it should recognize extract identity as an entities from that review okay and these entities in order to do more discussion about the entities you know it should give me links about the entities now what happens let me tell you there are some of the words having multiple meaning okay what it has to recognize is that in totality it has to recognize the exact meaning of that entity and um, uh, more description about the meaning of that entity it can give me through the different links links of uh, you know uh, uh, um, uh, some websites and uh, which are discussing about uh, that word 
which are discussing about the meaning of that word. OK, so these links, it will show me to elaborate the meaning of that word, a specific word. So let me put this code to run. And then we will see the result of this. Code. So I just put this code. Python text analysis and translate dot by text analysis and translate dot by OK, let us see from the top. Now here is the first uh, review, and if you read that text, OK, you will realize that uh, every comment there is in a positive way. So clean rooms, good service, port edge is very peaceful. OK, we had a tester, uh, we had the tester menu, which was fabulous. So see here it is mentioning it is positive sentiment, English, the Royal Hotel, all these are the key phrases. What it has extracted from that review. Entities, hotel, staff, all these are the entities. OK, and good music. OK, that good music has been discussed on Wikipedia pages on this URL. So you may be having some different meaning. But what meaning it has taken? Now, while pouncing upon that word, that meaning it will explain to in URLs. That is called as a uh, language short name, EN. Another review. Now, in this review, observe here, it is an old hotel. Room furnishing are average. It means, you know, all negative reviews. Okay, bit old now, require changing. Internet did not work. OK, website says it is close to the British Museum, but it is too far from walk. That's why sentiments are negative. It is English again. Again, it has extracted key phrases and entities from there, and it has for the for a couple of words. You know, it has mentioned the link links. The third review. We stayed here August after reading uh, reviews. OK, we were very pleased. So this seems to be a positive comment. OK. The only downside was noise from Lombard Street. So asked to have a room farthest away from the traffic. This is negative comment. So in this review, there are positive as well as negative comments. That's why sentiment is fixed. Next review. This is again mixed. Very noisy, rooms are tiny. This is again mixed. Next trip. Here it is. Now see this text. It has recognized it as a fringe. OK, positive sentiments are positive. And what I did is I have asked it to translate it into English so that I can understand. And its translation is it's a pleasant hotel, Hotel Birmingham. I love this hotel. So this is translation into English. Sixth review has some Hindi text. So again, it has recognized that Hindi text and it has realized that it is with a full of positive sentiments. OK, and then I do ask it to translate it into Hindi and here. It is. So here we have used language detection. We have used sentiment analysis on the text. We also have used translators to translate it into specific language. So that's how this code can be written to do uh, all these things. Again, I repeat for this examination, you know, you need to know the features. You don't need to you know, go into the code, code details. Okay, let me take you to the another uh, code here. Okay, here it is. Review translator dot py. 
And what I am doing here is. I will give those reviews to it. And I want it to convert those reviews. If those reviews are positive reviews, I want it to translate those reviews. OK, but how I want it to translate. I want it to translate to speak. I want it to convert into audio. OK, so how do I convert it to audio? So let me just put it to run. And then we will see how it picks out and read those reviews for us. Review translator dot file. Review translator dot file. Now this is the first review. OK, second review is negative. That's why it is bypassed. Review passed. Review six. Again, it is positive. So see this review, it was in Hindi and uh, the speaking is also happening in Hindi, but this review, it was in French and now, but uh, person is speaking in uh, Hindi. How I did make it possible? So I have to select a voice name. Now this is a voice of Mr. Madhur. Okay, and uh, what they have done is uh, they have given you a list of uh, the voice names. OK, with a different types of accents. So there are Hindi accents in India also. You know, there are South Indian accents and Central Indian accents and North Indian accents. So multiple accents are available there. Those also you have to select. OK, and you have to get it translated. So text to audio translation here, what I have shown to you. Text to audio translation I have uh, shown to you. OK, now let me let me tell you or let me show to you whether it will understand my voice and accordingly then we'll do a translation. So here it is. I am putting this code to run. Here what it will do, it will understand my voice and accordingly then it will give me the answer. OK, so I am putting it to run. This is the last program what I will show to you. Picking clock. Dot. Why? Python, what is this? What time is it? And time to end all labs. <laughs> but try to understand now how it has in uh, taken my voice as input. OK. Here. Transcript grammar. Pitch recognizer. Pitch uh, speak now. Uh, it has taken my voice as input and then, you know, uh, it has found the answer to my voice. OK, it told me the time. OK, and also it has added its uh, some uh, description. OK, so this is how your your Alexa works. This is how robots work. You simply tell something to it and then 
it does it for you. So all these things, such things are possible uh, in the cognitive service. With the available time, I cannot uh, take you through every kind of demo. OK, only a few of the demos I could take you through. But otherwise, you know, this is I hope is a kind of an overview. OK, uh, sufficient to go for AI 900 examination. <clears throat> yes. There are a few slides and uh, uh, translation service from one language to another, from text to audio, from audio to text, from audio to text is also possible. I already have done the translation of one of the uh, speech of Mohandas Karamchan Gandhi, okay, into text. So audio to text is also possible. Multiple permutations and combinations are possible here. Conversational language understanding. You know, here I will ask it to do something and it will do that thing. Like, I will ask it to switch on the fan and it will switch on the fan. I will ask it to switch off the AC and it will switch off the AC. There, conversional language understanding to be uh, used. Okay, and then bot services where you will put some question, okay, and it will revert to you with the answer. So again, for bot services, you know this what uh, uh, NLP what we have understood, you know that is uh, down the line being used. So I may put the question uh, in the form of an audio or email or some message, and then it has to revert to. That is all about bot services. In this uh, AI week, uh, there is a session we are organizing even for uh, you know, dealing with the bots also. Okay, so just to check for the date and then that session. Okay, now it is the time for us to understand what how you will do the preparation. Okay, for that purpose, I take you to Uh, maybe Google here. Okay, and I take you to uh, the web page here. First of all, let me search for that web page. Okay, uh, Azure certification AI 900. This search you will give. OK, and you will search for Azure website. Ah, here it is, exam AI 900, here it is. OK, and when you click here, you will land up on this page. And remember, this page is full of information. OK, let me go from top to bottom and bring you know, some of the important things to your notice. Here is AI study guide, AI 900 study guide. So let me open that URL. OK, and on this page. You know, lots of uh, information is available. Very important page for you. Exam scoring and score reports, how you will get exam scoring that is available here so that uh, hyperlink I am opening. On this page, you observe that the scale will be from 1 to 1000 and passing will be 700 or greater. That is a uh, passing score. Okay. Also, you observe very important point. If you choose an incorrect answer, if you choose an incorrect answer, you won't earn the point for that question or part, no points are deducted for incorrect. It means even if your answer is wrong, there is no negative marking. No negative marking there. This is very important point. So I will recommend you to attempt each and every question. Because there is no negative marking. Apply your best knowledge, apply your best logic. Apply your best logic. Sometimes you know you may not be uh, sure about the answer. 
then you apply your logic okay, and attempt the question. So when and when you go for your examination, ensure for that examination, this point is mentioned. OK. And this point is very important to note. OK, it may not be forever there. OK, but for that examination, whether that point is applicable or not, that you will have to verify. Okay. Another is the sandbox. This is again another important uh, uh, link what they are giving to. OK, so I click on the sandbox. OK, and here is the examination environment that will appear in front of you. Whenever you go for the final examination, you know what kind of pages you can see there. You know, you have to go through uh, this sandbox once before you go for the examination. So observe here. You will land up whenever you go for the examination. You will land up on this page. OK, you please read necessary instructions. Right away you know, without waiting for going for the examination, so thereby it can save your time. I have read and accept. Yes, I am clicking. OK, on this page, observe here are the instructions. Here is a, a time clock. OK, countdown clock. OK, and I want to click on the next button to go to the next page. Here it will show you the duration of the examination. Remember, duration of the examination uh, is 150 minutes, two and a half hours, 150 minutes. There will be. Uh, questions. Uh, uh, around 50 questions. OK, now for this examination for foundational examination, there is no case study. Case study is there for expert level examination. So for foundational level examination, there will not be any case study. Actual examination duration. Is 120 minutes. Total examination duration is 150 minutes. Actual examination duration is the 120 minutes. OK, because 15 minutes early you have to join the examination and after your final submission, you have to stay there for 15 minutes. That's why total 150 minutes duration. OK, yes. Going next. Thank you. I will have to go to it again. Achha. OK, ready to start examination? Yes. And now it will start the examination. Again next and see here. Countdown has begun now. Here is a portion where your question will appear, and here are the answers to be selected. What is your favorite sound? Now, here they are putting very generic questions. In AI 900 examination, your questions will be for cognitive services. So, I like river sound or I like whistle sound, so that I have selected. Okay, and then I can click on next or previous. Couple of other things are available. Sometimes you know for uh, getting the answer to the question, you may have to use a calculator. Now you should not keep any calculator. You should not e uh, take calculator in pro matrix center or even if you are appearing for the examination from home, you should not keep calculator with you. Because they are giving you calculator here. OK, so here calculator will be uh, appearing and you can use at any moment. If you want to take a break, you can click here. Remember, if you are appearing for the examination from home. You know, you will have to switch on the video and audio both of your laptop. Somebody you know, will keep monitoring you all the time. OK, and uh, you are, uh, that somebody must never say uh, must never see a leap moments that somebody must never uh, listen to any kind of whisper, any kind of audio that somebody must never uh, listen. And that somebody must not see anybody around you. OK, that somebody is, you know, very meticulously monitoring uh, all the activities around you. OK, so you have to prevent your even family members to come into room. So you have to lock that room from inside. I normally uh, give these examinations in the midnight because now, that time I'm pretty sure nobody will uh, either knock the door or come inside the room. 
that way. Next. Again, here is a question and I am supposed to select some of the uh, so some of the options here. Okay, so maybe great snack. So maybe I am selecting apple and a banana. Both those are making great snack for me. Clicking on the next. Sometimes your size of the question is a bit large to accommodate into this space. OK, then you have to be careful, you know, to scroll it up and scroll down. OK, to ensure that you are reading complete question. It should not happen that you have missed this scroll bar and only part of the question you are reading. OK, see this question where you are being asked to match the pairs. So furniture, whether you will keep furniture at home or office. OK, so furniture will always be there in the home. Okay, I will have to drag it and drop it. Here it is. Sorry. Furniture. Lamp. Lamp is a furniture. Lamp can be at a home. Then sofa. It will also be at home. But table is normally at office. Bookshelf may be at home. The most likely uh, answer I have to mention here. Ping pong a bookshelf may be at home. Uh, yes. Okay. So that's how you know I will answer the chess, uh, chess set. It will be at home. I don't think it will be at office, not all offices. At least desk chair. It will be. That's how. You no know, match the pair like question will appear and that's how you will answer it by dragging and dropping uh, correct answer in front of correct option. Here is some problem statement you have given and you have to you know, answer these steps. You have to select the valid steps and answer them in specific order. So I may be selecting a couple of steps now here. You know I am creating arbitrary answer. OK, in the examination you will go through the steps carefully. And whenever you want to change their order, you know, you will select the steps which you want to change the order for. OK, and you can change the order by using up and down like buttons there. These questions are uh, difficult because these questions have two things to uh, do. One is uh, selecting the appropriate and correct uh, uh, step. That is one thing. And second is arranging the steps in appropriate order. Such uh, questions. Uh, Answering such questions, these are more weightage, obvious. Okay, going next. So, this type of question again, you will read the question. There is a scroll bar appearing. Okay, and then from here, you will uh, select appropriate answer. Again, I am giving arbitrary answer okay, without even thinking or applying any logic. So, I am giving arbitrary answer, multiple choices, what I am giving. And then click on next. So multi choice questions may be something like this. Here is also another uh, format of multi choice question. Create a user role. And then some other option. I am again. I am selecting arbitrary answers. Okay, I am not applying any logic and I am selecting arbitrary answers. Okay, again, I will have to read the question. And here I will have to select the answer. Some answer I may be selecting. Multiple answers, perhaps it is allowing. No, it is allowing single answer to select. Going ahead. This is a case study based question, and uh, you. This is a discussion on AI um, 900. So you will not receive case study based questions. So I am fast forwarding. I'm just fast forwarding question and some answer I'm giving. And the 10th question now I will attempt. 10th question again, I am giving answers arbitrarily. Yes, 
and this is no final submission. All the questions I am submitting. OK, I have answered 10 questions. There is no unanswered question remaining. I have marked any question for review or giving any comment. I want to finish it. Are you sure I want to finish? Yes, I am sure I want to finish it. And then at, at, least at last, it has to show me my score. OK, it is asking me to give the feedbacks on the questions. I don't want to give the comments or feedback. OK, I will I will exit the examination. Yes, confirmation I am giving and now it has to show me. Uh, the score. And my score is extremely poor that even it has refrained. Uh, for showing me my score. No, it is showing me my score, but it is poor. And yes, it is bound to happen because. I have given arbitrary answers. Had I given answers looking into the questions, thinking uh, for a while and then giving the answer, you know, uh, the thing would have been different. OK, so that's how you know, before you go for the examination, at least once visit this uh, portal, OK, and try to understand the examination. Here it will give you analysis of uh, your questions. You know which uh, in which area you are good, in which area you need more improve, imp improvements. That also it will show. Okay, and that's how you will practice for the examination. Again, I am back to the study guide page, and on this study guide page, if you scroll down, from here you can test a free practical assignment. If I click here, just a minute. I, let me open it in another tab. Very practical test. There are around 50 questions here. You can practice, OK, and answer these questions. So this is something you will try yourself, OK, but this uh, practice test you will give after your study. So I'm taking you back to the same page. OK, you ask me where I can see. Uh, the curriculum details here, here on the same page you can see. Uh, curriculum, curriculum details and module wise we teach. So here. OK, and this is the most reliable page. Uh, to see the curriculum, most reliable page to see the curriculum. The whole curriculum in detail you can see here. After you scroll down. Here you can see different study resources also. Here you can see different study resources. Let me do one thing. Let me share this URL with you in the chat box so that. OK, you can use that URL uh, to refer to the documentation. OK, uh, there is a MS Learn also. OK, in MS Learn also, you will see a ready documentation. So on this page, now again, let me share this URL with you. On that page, if you scroll down, you will see multiple documentation pages. OK, so they are calling them as a different learning path. So this is one learning path. This is another learning path. You know, for this uh, code, I believe there are. Six learning paths. OK, one, two, three, four, five. And this is six. Here you will see all the material at one place. And all these web pages you will see material very nicely discussed. So if I take you to this page. OK, here are different pages available. Subsections available or modules available in that learning path. But you have to visit them one by one. OK, so I may be visiting to this. OK, and then. I will start this uh, these pages. Yeah, let me start button here. OK, I will visit the very first page. And you read it carefully. Wherever you know it, they want to add input through videos, that is also possible. OK, and uh, text is also there. 
So you read these uh, things carefully. One more benefit is that whenever you read these pages, you know it adds uh, some points to your credit. Okay, it adds those points to your credit. Okay, and here it can keep showing you your progress. I have reached to level level eleven. Okay, you your level will begin from one, and uh, thereby. You know your profile gets improved on Azure. Sorry, on Microsoft uh, uh, login, your profile gets improved. Okay, and uh, these scores are added into your transcript also. Okay, many of us may be aware of the transcript, you know, which shows your total uh, uh, say efforts in learning the subject. And so these uh, points are added onto the transcript also. OK, so this, these are the pages. Will you, everybody here, to go through these pages and understand more and more things about the subject. Going through all these pages will make yourself ready up to 90%, 80 to 90%. Remember, all these pages, if you read all these pages carefully, OK, and study all these pages, you will be ready up to 80 to 90 percent uh, for the examination. Okay, here on this page, it is giving you multiple documentation. So that documentation will also help you to fill up the gap of that 20 to 15 percent. Okay, and once you read this documentation also, then you know you will score very high without single percent chance of getting paid. So here are the pages. Okay. Here are the documentations. Here is a scoop. Okay. All these things are here available here on this. Okay. The last point to discuss is how do you schedule your examination? OK, other things I already have brought to your notice. From here you can go for the sandbox. From here you can uh, go to the study guide where you will see some important URLs. OK, and from here, you, here is the URL from where you can do the practice uh, assessment. There you will be asked with the 50 questions and it will also show you uh, uh, the answer also, say, which feature of speech service can identify distinct user voices? So speech synthesis can do that thing for you, or no, sorry, speech recognition can do that thing. But you will click on check your answer, and thereby, in case if you have given wrong answer or correct answer, that also uh, appears there. Okay, so even if your answer is wrong, not only it will show you that your answer is wrong, it will also show you uh, links from where you can verify that answer. Okay, so it is a good uh, kind of a, uh, you know, try uh, to prepare uh, yourself for the examination. Next, what is used to test the language understanding APP uh, model? Test the language understanding application model. OK, so maybe NTT. So thereby you can try giving different options here. Okay, going back to earlier page. After you have tried and after you feel like you are ready with. You, know, you can then schedule your examination. In India, your examination can be scheduled by Pearson view. So if you are from India, don't go with a Centi port. Go with a Pearson view. From here, you can select a country. I am selecting as uh, India. OK, and here it will show you the examination fees. Now, before you go for the examination, in case if you have some discount coupon, you will get the discount coupon from your company also. Because many companies have already gone into collaboration with the Microsoft. And they have gone into the learning uh, program with the Microsoft. So 
uh, uh, to such companies, Microsoft might already have given you know privilege. It is called privilege. So that discount privilege also you can use here and you can reduce your examination fees. So whenever you are clicking here on a schedule with Pearson view, it will ask you the time slot from where you want to appear for the examination, whether you want to appear for the examination from home or from Pro Matrix Center. You know, so it will ask you to fill up such information. And finally, when the time comes to uh, say pay the amount, at that time it will ask you uh, to submit a discount coupon. And whatever discount coupon you submit, accordingly then it will uh, it will charge you. Okay, it will uh, deduct the discount amount, and then whatever the remaining amount, it will ask you to pay that amount. So maybe. Uh, uh, whether you want to pay it through Google or whatever it be, but that is again online payment without protocols. So here at this place, you have, uh, so this is certification profile. Here is a discount, and here is a executive exam. Multiple steps are appearing there. So this is a place from where you will schedule your exam. From this place, you can schedule. So that's all from my side. I would like to uh, check questions from you. Achha, let me go through the questions one by one. Slides which you showed just to have the basic overview. Uh, I doubt whether uh, we are allowed to share these slides. The reason is these are all proprietary slides of uh, Microsoft. OK, and Microsoft does not allow us to share their proprietary material. Is any other certification from Azure necessary to understand AI 900 completely? No. AI 900 is a basic certification. OK, but one one more certification you can give you know, for better understanding of all Azure services, and it is AZ 900. AZ 900 gives you complete fundamental idea of cloud. What are our regions? What are our availability set? Availability, uh, availability zone. You know, whenever you work with any service, maybe cognitive service or any service, you know, this kind of information is necessary. So, what is availability set? What is availability zone? Uh, what are all regions? So, all basic understanding you can get from Azure nine is it nine hundred. OK, that you can appear that you can first of all give the certification. OK, but what I have observed is that parallelly you can give both the uh, certifications because, you know, uh, uh, for AI 900, AZ 900, 900 is not prerequisite. But you need AZ 900 if you want to use AI 900 on on floor. So whenever you want to use AI 900 on floor, then knowledge of AZ 900 is essential. But if you want to just uh, pass the AI 900 examination, then you know, knowledge of AZ 900 is not necessary. Is there any series of certifications? Yes, they have introduced AI 900 as of now, and there is another AI. 102, okay, AI 300, AI 500, AI 500, AI 300, AI 500, they are for a different rules. So maybe AI 300 is for uh, more architecting rule, AI 500 is for administrative rule, okay, but you have to first of all complete up to this and thereafter then. You can choose which role you want to enter in. Accordingly, then you will select other certification. But up to AI 102, everybody wants to work in artificial intelligence. There are certifications. Uh, OK. Difference between custom vision and face. Uh, ha, yes. Custom vision. 
uh, can create a models for every kind of uh, can create a model uh, miss you can customize the model there you can customize the model there okay in custom vision you will uh, customize the models for uh, um, uh, different species different uh, um, uh, manufacturing parts that that you can do in custom vision okay you cannot use a custom vision for creating face models for that purpose they are giving you face service separately so face recognition is a separate service where you can create your own face recognition models and these face recognition models will be able to recognize faces of all employees of the company so if you want a face recognition service for company you will use face recognition model not the custom models if you want to use uh, create a models for recognizing different manufactured units there you will use custom vision okay that those are the differences those are the difference now tech mahindra whether it reimburse re re it that you will have to check with your hr department okay because uh, tech mahindra hr department must be aware you know in what level of collaboration they, are, they have gone uh, with a uh, microsoft and whether their collaboration uh, supports pre examination fees or discounted that you will have to check with your hr department uh, again i repeat we cannot send the slides okay i think i have given answers to all the questions that are mentioned here okay and if you have any other question to mention please mention i will be waiting uh, for you for a while and in the meantime you know uh, chaitali must have uh, shared a feedback link to you humble request everybody here to submit the feedback feedback is extremely important for us can we get the recording or slides in the mail uh, yes i remember chaitali already have mentioned one uh, message here in the chat box that the slides will be made available on youtube okay although no sorry recording will be made available on youtube slides will not be made available to you because they come under copyright uh, see chaitali has shared a feedback link again Everybody is requested to fill up the feedback before you give the submit. Also, check with the Chaitali uh, about the schedule of this uh, month. You know there are many uh, such type of sessions, three hours and four hour sessions. uh we are planning for you and in those sessions you know we are uh, uh discussing deliberating on open ai open ai acha ha can you comment on vector dbs and what is the cost model associated with azure ai related services vector databases are available okay and uh, from them we can pull the data uh i am not much aware of them i will i have noted down i will explore them more okay but here in case if you go for ai you know normally if you want to pull the data you pull it from uh, blob storage block storages blob storages or data lake stores you also can pull the data from uh Um, if it is a figurative data you can pull it from relational database management systems or no sql databases also
you can pull the data from variety of the data sources. OK, not only that, even you can means you can design a real time pipeline for pulling the data from event hubs and IOT hubs. From there also you can pull the data. OK, and you can uh, use that data for the purpose of the prediction. So real time pipeline also can be designed with you. So that's all from my side. I think uh, it is the time for me to drop myself. If you have some queries, uh, Chetali has already shared her WhatsApp link. OK, uh, I will explore more on that. Uh, what you told me. Vector DB. I will uh, discuss more on. I, I will explore more on vector DB. OK, and if you send me the query on WhatsApp, I will. Whatever be my findings, I will share. Uh, those are my findings on vector DB. So that's all from my side. OK, and uh, hope uh, to meet you soon in our next session. And uh, yes, thanks. thank you, CB, sir, thanks, for this insightful session. Uh, guys, I have shared the uh, link for feedback. So make sure you submit the feedback form. Also, we are having a in-person meetup tomorrow in Mumbai. All the details has been mentioned in the chat box. So if you reside in Mumbai itself and you like to join or come for that meetup, you can register for the same. So see you. I am going on uh, mute and I will uh, unshare my screen and I will drop myself. Sure, sir.